I was like, that's my bro. I'm just going to humor this nigga till he get tired of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, first of all, we was recording on like Friday nights. And at the time when we first started recording, I had, you know, I was dealing with a little chick. And like Friday night for a single man, that's that's motherfucking prime time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, all right, we'll do this podcast thing. And, you know, I just figure after a couple, you know, I really thought after the first one, he just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> mm, damn, Q. Baby, you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy versus everybody podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy, Shy vs. A-Bite Podcast. Ain't no competition for this. I don't see it, man. We got two vets in the game, man. Y'all some pioneers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> these brothers started off podcasting. They had hair. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They had hair, man. You know what I'm saying? Most consistent podcast I know, man. They on episode 397 currently. Mm-hmm. They got uh, multiple shows. You know what I'm saying? You can catch Dame After Dark. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh this weekend and this weekend culture. Yep, yep. Uh Shop Talk Podcast, man. We got they some cast tech alums. So I know my producer probably don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got a Mr. Don't Text him with the Green Bubbles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Jay Johnson. Yeah, yeah. And we got the liquor store legend. Yeah. Game going wild, man. What's up? What's up? What's up, man? It's uh, been a long time, man. man. Man, it's been a minute. We ain't seen you since what? The the summit. Yeah. Yep. In October. That was that went well. And uh man, just happy to be here, dog. Yeah. No, for sure. We talked about it for a minute. Yep. And this all happened from me stumbling to you <laughs> randomly as hell at five below one day. Yep. You know, for co- sure. carrying kids along with yep, us. Yep, 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 yep. Seeing him at uh five below. First time I uh ran to Jay Johnson was uh me doing the show with the twins. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? But y'all was one of the podcasts I was was looking at when I was studying when I was trying to start my own so it was y'all the twins and stuff and shoot, y'all two been the most consistent I've seen out here Man, you know what I'm saying I really so appreciate I appreciate this. y'all for having me on y'all platform and you know what I'm saying tell my little story a little bit Hey man, we appreciate being here. It's all uh, it's all love, man. Once we made the connection, yeah, you know, even though you're on the east side, yeah, that's what I said. He came to the east side. I said it got dark as soon as he got. Hey man, we had blessed. The, I mean, it is Sunday, so y'all needed a blessing. The Lord on, don't uh, sign. <laughs> the Lord don't shine the sun on ninety four. I'm glad I'm in front of the green sign, man. That's important. For sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, I was looking for it as soon as I came in. <laughs> you already know, man. But we start every episode with "Salute me while I'm here." You know, we we wait for people to pass away before we give them their flowers. But it can't be an easy answer. It can't be kids. It can't be parents. You know what I'm saying? It can't be nobody you mess with, you know what I'm saying, as far as relationship-wise. It got to be somebody out there, easy answer. So, got somebody you want to go ahead and shine some light to? Man, salute me while I'm here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, listen, yeah, I want to salute uh, the good brother Raphael Wright or Pharaoh mm-hmm. um, for opening up a neighborhood grocery. For sure. So, um, we met. Well, I just saw him tweet. I don't know. This must be 2016, 2017. Mm-hmm. I saw a tweet about somebody trying to open up a grocery store in the city of Detroit. Mm-hmm. And we reached out. Um, we're like, yo, man, we should have him on the show. And he came back on the show when we were still, like, in our first studio. Mm-hmm. And uh, we built a relationship. And, like, he's just a solid brother. And he literally took an idea from nothing. to They just had their grand opening on the 18th. Mm-hmm. Um, the store is open. On the east side, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that's what five hundred meters deep, man. but yep. like, man, yeah. that's—I mean, it's such an uh, amazing, uh, amazing thing to take something that used to be like a neighborhood um, convenience or a liquor store and turn that into um, a grocery store, man. Mm-hmm. So, like, he need all the love and appreciation and the shout outs that he can get because that's amazing. No, that's Absolutely. definitely dope. Yeah, shout out to him for sure. Absolutely. If I got to give somebody their flowers, man, I'm gonna salute uh, our homegirl, Crystal White. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crystal has W by Crystal White Athleisure wear And I remember the first time we had Crystal on the show She bought us some t-shirts mm-hmm. That she had printed up And I don't ever want to knock nobody hustle Because I ain't never had no clothing line I ain't never printed one t-shirt in my life For sure. But to see her progression From printing the shirts She tried her own Uh offset i don't want to say offset but like she was doing some other stuff with the sweaters and and things of that nature and then she kind of like ventured into the athleisure wear with her uh journey and just to see that like she's building a huge brand off Mm. of that Mm. it's just amazing to watch and along with that she got her few different podcasts uh 
You know, she doing a personal training and she she living her work. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like she talked about, you know, being a, a heavier woman, you know, getting into the gym for for health reasons. And uh, she made it happen. So man. shout out to her. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for, yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Salute, salute, salute. But uh, usually I go into the, you know, saying episode asking about your year and stuff like that. But um, I'm going to start off 12-1-2017 episode celebration of life you know what i'm saying i know uh it's been what around this time probably a little tough and you know what I'm saying it's been six years since your og your mom passed mm-hmm. away whatever mm-hmm. and that's something unfortunately all three of us have in common you know what I'm saying we all lost our our, our mothers mm-hmm. and stuff like that so i just want to you know what I'm saying ask you how are you doing is everything okay as far as like you know what I'm saying around this time it gotta be a little tough man because uh you know it's the holidays and yeah, stuff like sure. that so you know i just want to make sure and check on you and see if you everything good with you Oh, well, first, I appreciate that, my brother. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, so my mom passed away six years ago on the 22nd. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was the day before Thanksgiving mm-hmm. um, in uh, 2017. Um, so, like, holidays have been a little bit different. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So um, Thanksgivings have been a little bit different. However, every year, um, you kind of learn to, you know what I'm saying, you learn to cope with it. Mm-hmm. Um, what's interesting about that episode, December first? So like we haven't missed an episode. Mm-hmm. So when that actually happened, um, we had something in a stash. Mm-hmm. So like we we didn't technically record that week. Mm-hmm. Like I came in, we had an episode already pre-recorded, and I just said like I don't know five ten minutes or something, but I didn't talk about it, and yeah. we put that up there. So like that episode, December first, was like the first time. Af- that was the first time. I had told everybody about it or mm-hmm. that we had or technically the first week that we wasn't together on a Friday, like recording. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um that was a pretty interesting episode. No, man. for sure. Yeah. It was ended up being a really good episode, right? <laughs> but like voice was cracking yeah, and like know, it, was, yeah, it was it was yeah. a, it was a it was an emotional episode for yeah, sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So how'd you yeah. do it now? Like do you know how days are you are you like are you celebrating? Or are you like kinda like I already don't care? No, I still celebrate. You know what I'm saying? Thanksgiving was always a good thing. I and mean, it was usually at our house. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Especially when mine got ill for, for years. So, like, Thanksgiving, everybody was at our house mm-hmm. anyway. So, it was like, and she was big on family. So, it's like, we can't, like, not celebrate. Yeah. Um, But it do be different. I spent a little bit more time at the crib. For sure. Yeah. What about you, Dan? What do you remember about that, uh, about that, um, that episode? The crazy thing is when I, I text Jay the day his mom's passed. Like mm-hmm. I knew everything that was going on mm-hmm. and I remember texting him to check in on him and he told me she had just made her transition. Yeah. And I knew how tough that was. And like, you know, I don't never want to get shit twisted. Like me and Jay was friends before mm-hmm. we ever started podcasting. Mm-hmm. So like, this has always been like my man's. Yeah. So I kind of knew what space, you know, he was in cause I lost my mother shit back in 13, yeah. January of 13, like le- legit, like right after Christmas. So I can understand, you know, being in that space and how like the holidays can, can make it tougher. Mm -hmm. And it's always, it's always been love and support. Like me and Jay, we've never like, you know, I know a lot of niggas fall out, you know, talk crazy to each other, but like, that's never been our relationship. So Mm -hmm. like I was always there for him in terms of like, you know, moral support and whatever I could do to be there. And as me and Jay have done the podcast and even grown as friends, like his brother has become like my man's, his people have become my people. So mm-hmm. like, we always there for each other, good, bad ups or downs. Like this, is my brother. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just wild. Cause you say 2013, my mom passed away in 2012, mm. uh, April 2nd. So everybody thought it was a joke. <laughs> like, Oh, how you going to try to play a joke the day after, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, listen, bro, I don't play about, you know, saying no, no death or whatever. But yeah, you gotta appreciate those times you do get to spend with your mothers, your grandmothers, your, shit, your kids. Cause you, shit, you never know what today, you know what I'm saying, what's going man, on. I, I tell a nigga in a minute, man, heaven is at the feet of your mother. And as, you know, as niggas in the city that, you know, if I see them that's on site, that I wouldn't wish that hurt on. Mm-hmm. Because, like, there's nothing, nothing in life that'll prepare you for the emptiness of losing a parent. Like, I lost man. both. I've lost both my yeah, parents. Too, yeah. So like some days, like my nigga, it, it may sound wild to niggas, but like dog, I feel like an orphan. Yeah. Like even though I've been grown, living on my own since I was like 18, 19, you know, you st- that safety net that your parents provide, <laughs> even real. just being there, yeah. if it's just support, somebody you can talk to, like not having that, 
And then like my like I got an uncle that's my dad's brother, but that nigga crazier than a motherfucker. <laughs> you know, I can't lean on that nigga for like no advice or support. I got some other relatives, like I got a you know, cousins, but they like on the East Coast and shit. Mm-hmm. So like I don't have nobody locally that I can just like tap into, mm-hmm. you know, when I need somebody. So like a lot of that shit, man. Like, I tell my kids all the time, I was like, I don't ask nobody for no advice. I don't answer to nobody because if shit hit the fan, mm-hmm. the the shit fall on me. No, so, like, sure. I don't talk to nobody but God yeah. and me and him figure it out. That's yeah. it. It's crazy you say that, but it's like orphan because I, I, I can really, you know what I'm saying, understand mm-hmm. where you're coming from on that. Because, like, I told my brother, my mom and my dad, you know, my, my dad passed when I was 13. Mom, when I was like 24, 25. So it's like now That's so young, bro. Yeah, you gotta make sure everything you do is correct because you ain't got you know, you fuck up, you always go back to mom's house like, damn mom, I fucked up. I need to come back and stay with you for a couple months. Now when you fuck up, it's like nigga, who the fuck I'm gonna go with if yeah. anything go wrong? Nowhere. <laughs> Streets. <laughs> <Exactly>. Streets. <Yeah. laughs> so you gotta make sure you're on point, man. That come to working, taking care of your business, everything gotta be on point because like I said, you ain't got that that person to fall back on. That shit turn you to a real fucking adult. I mean, and I don't care how grown you is, mm-hmm. like when you when you know like nigga, I know if my like my furnace last year went out day before Christmas. Mm-hmm. I know the kids coming over tomorrow. I gotta figure something to fuck out, <laughs> nigga. I done bought Christmas gifts. Yeah. I, it ain't like I'm sitting on a shit ton of money. Yeah, I yeah. gotta figure something to fuck out because the house can't be. I nigga, I woke up house. 65 yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. we middle of december I, the kids coming by for dinner and to pick up you these can tough it out by yourself but the kids ain't having no nah. yeah. and, and that'd be the thing like you just gotta you just gotta figure that shit the fuck out and i always say because my oldest child is 20 mm. and i'm trying to impress upon him about the importance of being a man is that when you a man nobody gives a fuck no nobody gives a fuck if you are able-bodied man <laughs> niggas looking at you like well why, why the fuck you ain't yeah. doing something about it <laughs> Because I don't know what the fuck to do. You know, I ain't got you. You want to say that you got all the answers and you got everything figured out, but you don't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like you the head of your family, you the head of your household. They looking at you like everybody (laughs) is looking at you to like, what what the fuck you going to do? And you got to figure that shit the fuck out. And and regardless of how the decision lay, I used to think my dad was the meanest motherfucker in the world. And he had this, he had this saying, like, I don't do what's fair. I do what's right. And I used to be like, but nigga, that shit ain't, it ain't fair. (laughs) But like when you the man of your house, like that's how it go. Like, Look, I tell the kids all the time, like I'm not with you, I'm not with your mama. I don't have to consult her about shit. Mm-hmm. When I make decisions up over here, that's the decision. Mm-hmm. When I say some shit gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Or if I say it ain't gonna happen, it ain't that's gonna it. Happen. And yeah. that's just the end of it. For sure. You can call your mama if you want to. I don't fuck her. I don't live with her. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I ain't gotta tell mama. I, I, I tell her too. <laughs> like, <laughs> I see your mama calling. I don't even pick up. I just I just wait till the phone stop. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Call your mom. I, <laughs> I ain't fucked her in a, in a decade. I don't give a fuck what she got to say. I don't cater to no bitches. I don't fuck. Shit. Oh, man. oh but what you about to say, uh, uh, Jay? Man, I was gonna say one other thing, man. <laughs> one thing about that particular episode, which kind of changed, at least in my eyes, uh, the pod and how we kind of interact, is because, um, like I think I have become a professional at. Um, given the appearance that I'm sharing, but mm-hmm. not actually sharing any mm-hmm. real information. Mm-hmm. But on that particular episode, like we really did share, yeah. you know what I'm saying about my personal life and and things of that nature. And then like so many people reached out and 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 and, sit, and sent messages and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. And it was like, well, you know what? Like these folks actually do take time out of their week every every week and yeah. listen to whatnot. So it's like. They do know you a little bit. Yeah. They don't, but they do. Mm-hmm. And it, it felt like um, I had a little bit more of a path to like open up and share stuff. So, yeah. like, I mean, Dame is going through different things on the show that some of it is like, yo, they've been along this journey with us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, sure. that personal mm-hmm. thing is, you know, kind of like what kind of opened up that lane for me for sure. With, without the podcast, would it have been a little, you know, saying harder on you to deal with that whole losing your mom? Man. Yeah, I think in ge- life in general would be a little bit more difficult yeah. without the podcast because regardless of what people say, like it's one hundred percent therapy for me. Oh yeah, for sure. All the stuff that I got trapped inside of me, or my thoughts and opinions on different things, like I gotta that shit gotta get out so I can be normal again. Mm-hmm. And 
I mean, how else, how else do you get that yeah. get that information out? For sure, no, you do, you do, because it's, it's only so much talking you can do if you got, you know, saying a, a wife or a girlfriend or you know, saying it's only so much you can. This you should can say. Been, <laughs> this should have been so, such an outlet, and like, you know, relatively we've been single like since we've been doing the podcast mm-hmm. and shit. So I mean. I nigga, I don't go home to no. I ain't, I ain't got no live in. I don't go home to no wife. Like, nigga, I get my shit off, yeah. and that's how that's how like I express it. I don't have nobody to to vent, and I ain't crying about it. But yeah. I ain't got nobody to necessarily vent to or talk about my day or talk about my week. I see yeah. this nigga, and like we, you know, we get to spilling. Yeah, yeah. Now you saying that y'all don't live with anybody? How quick do y'all kick somebody out your house when y'all sleep with them? Ooh. <laughs> Shit. Like y'all just <laughs> Well we started the podcast, I live with a woman. <laughs> Cause you like you, hey, we, yo, yo, I don't, like so, we, we was recording from the house that I, that I cohabitated in, but you know so, podcast when life happens, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I've I've lived with only two women in my life. Okay. Uh, my ex wife and then I did and, and one other person. Mm-hmm. Uh kicking out it just really depends on the relationship. <laughs> we talking about like getting our, off camera. We talking about you know first apartment, and you can't wait to kiss somebody y'all. So then it had me just thinking. Y'all said you know y'all have been kind of like single since y'all started the pod. So it was like, hey, for the most <laughs> for the most part, I like even though I be like on some wild shit. For the most part, I will be a gentleman about shit. And like if you want to stay the night, that's fine. Now I'm gonna give you two scenarios of some wild shit because I got this one chick that I used to fuck on. And I mean, nigga, the bitch beautiful. Yeah. The bitch is be- like beautiful. She looked like a thick ass version of Rihanna. And I always wanted her to stay tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I always wanted this bitch. I always wanted her to stay. But she had this thing where, like, she was married, like, when we first started kicking it. And mm. then she, like, was going through a separation. But, like, nigga, she do this thing. And I and I hate it to death. Like, I like to smoke and and get my shit off with mm-hmm. a lady. So, like, but after I smoke and we fuck, like, nigga, I'm in a coma. Mm-hmm. So, she would, like, set me up. She don't smoke. Mm-hmm. But she would, like, set me up. Like, nah, go smoke another one. Mm-hmm. So, now I'm higher than a light bill. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we fuck. And then, like, three, four in the morning, she leaving out in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. So, I wake up at, like, seven. <laughs> and I'm like, where the fuck the bitch at? <laughs> she gone. Oh, my she, shit gone, too. <laughs> No, my but she, kidneys. I know. she was good folks but then i did have this incident once like dog i wanted this it was this you know the chick all right you went on a date with her too oh shit <laughs> <laughs> oh, i know who you're talking about <laughs> but she came over to my house we did our thing and i had my kids there mm-hmm. which is not like necessarily a big deal mm-hmm. but like my bedroom is downstairs the kids rooms is upstairs so like i can get company in and out without no thing but like for her, I needed her to leave. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And she told me flat out, she's like, "I'm not leaving." Yeah. I'm like, "What?" <laughs> she she was like, she's like, "I'm a lady. Mm-hmm. It's such and such at night. I'm not leaving." Mm-hmm. I said, "You understand that if you stay here, you're never coming back here again." Mm-hmm. And she was just like, "We'll we'll see about it." Yeah. And she proceeded like not to leave the, Yo, the entire weird, night. That's <laughs> weird, dog. Like. That's just so fucking weird because I'm never staying somewhere that I don't, yeah. I'm not welcome. Yeah, all right. Right. My, it was like I had something to do early as fuck. And like, you know, most people don't want to wake up four or five in the morning if they yeah. ain't got to. Yeah. But she was just like, nah, I'm not, I'm not going nowhere. I'm staying the night. I don't care about your person. I mean, damn, this sound fucked up. But like, <laughs> yo, I'm a lady. Like, that's a, like, that don't got shit to you do with You wasn't a lady when you left out your house at 1130. <laughs> like, that don't got nothing nope. to do with nothing. Yeah. Right? You were not a lady when I called you at eleven thirty, and you came up over here knowing what time it was. Like this is just supposed to be <laughs> yeah, for sure. a little bit of a romp, and yeah. then you just go home. You're yeah. trying to make it look like it ain't what it is. It is that <laughs> you know this. what it was. This is what it is, and this is what it is. The fact I'm comfortable asking you to leave afterwards, so you know what the time it is. And shit. <laughs> have, have you ever used the podcast to get out something? Not even necessarily women, just oh, family yeah. and shit. Fuck like yeah. fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. First of all, it's every Friday. It's every Friday. <laughs> like I we don't like that's the day that we record. So mm. like, you know, I always use that's the number one. Like it's it's Friday. I can't. Mm. I, I can't. I got the pod. Yeah. Cause le- legitimately I got the pod on Friday. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I'm sorry. Or like, oh, I think I got a session that day. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, man. We got I some got guests it. coming through. I got. I yeah, gotta, I gotta get about it. I gotta get about it. 
Yeah, yeah, but other than that, you know what I'm saying? How have y'all year been? You know what I'm saying? As far as ups and downs, like, you know, the year almost over with. Mm-hmm. You know, it's about to be December. Like, how how the year been for y'all? Personally uh, and with the podcast. With the pod, man, it's uh it's been a challenging year. You know what I'm saying? We've definitely had some ups and downs business wise. Uh, but I'll be honest, man, just I won't even call it a fluke. Like God's timing is perfect. Mm-hmm. And we had a very unique opportunity come to us about a month ago uh, that's going to probably change the face of the podcast moving oh, forward. Wow. Mm. Uh, 2024 is looking completely optimistic. It's, it's a huge opportunity, especially if it works out the way that we envision that it's going to work. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, what's to come in terms of personally, man. It's just been, you know, just life challenges. You know, I I deal with some serious health issues and I'm trying to work out. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a a father of a bunch of kids, man. Like, you know, watching my kids at completely different stages in their lives and, you know, what that requires. You know, my I was just sitting here joking about like my oldest girl. She turned 18 next month. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's my baby. She going off to college next year. Like, nigga. I'm probably more worried about that shit than, <laughs> than anybody. Cause like, you know, that's, that's my baby girl. And yeah. I, you know, just how to, I can, I can protect her mm. on, on the West side. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Can't nothing, can't nothing get, can't a lot of shit get past me. Mm. But like when she away on somebody else's campus, trying mm-hmm. to figure out her life and maneuvering and dating, you know, those are the things that I worry about. Cause she don't do a lot of dating right now. She has a lot of, uh, strong thoughts about men and how dating is supposed to be, and like, I wonder so, where she get that from. No, I raised her wrong. I raised her wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I spoiled her when I shouldn't have. I should have told her no more in life. Like, I raised her wrong, mm-hmm. and now she going off into the world thinking that the world she stands in the middle and the yeah. planets move around her, yeah. and like that's not the way that the world really works. Mm-hmm. And she gonna have a rude awakening. So, I mean, just being a father, a man, shit, man, dating after 40 is wild than a motherfucker. I'm, you know, nigga, I do want to get married and settle down and look for love, but nigga, that shit crazy as fuck, too. <laughs> no, so, sure. so, I mean, it's, it's you know, I'm Yo, dating after 40 is wild. <laughs> That's I'm, crazy. And I even say that out loud because, like, damn, nigga, I'm over 40. Yeah. You feel me? But it is, though. But I'm just, you know what, man, at the end of it, God is great. And I'm thankful that I made it another year. I'm thankful that he's blessed me. You know, I look at my life and it's a lot of shit going on, shit that I don't even know how I'm going to handle. But like I said, man, I, I say my prayers. I put one foot in front of the other. And as long as I can get out of the bed, I still got another chance. So, yep, yep. you know, I take it I take it how it comes. Yep. What about you, Jay, this year? Um, it's been uh, professionally or podcast wise. I mean, it's been a pretty interesting year. Uh, ups and downs, of course. Um, but like Dame said, really optimistic. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a really good opportunity um, with Shop Talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw a lot of growth with um, this week in culture. Yeah. Um, this year, like it's crazy. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. And um, and you know, I've just been doing a lot of different things in the media space and just trying to figure things out and mm-hmm. like what do things look like what do we want to continue what do we want to change start stop finish you know what i'm saying like in professional world it's like what do you want to start what do you want to stop um what do you want to start type of thing start Mm -hmm. stop or or like what do you not want to do again um so this around the time the year where i I either mentally or literally write that stuff down Mm -hmm. um personally it's been Man, the podcast in general and the studio and everything, man, that take a lot out of your personal life mm. when you work a nine to five as well. Because yeah. there's only so much time in a day. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So in real life, the last, I don't know, five, six years, it's really just been work, studio, pod. Mm-hmm. You know That's what I'm it. saying? And then it's, some, it's difficult um fitting in a, a a romantic life in there because mm-hmm. like everybody not as understanding it's exactly. like listen you I got know things to do. and then, you know the line that everybody tell you people make time for what they make time for, for nigga sure. that's some shit that niggas who not busy that's say. some social media <laughs> shit you know what I'm saying cause like nigga what you want me to do nigga rent gotta get paid I exactly. gotta take this session yep. you feel me like if it don't get paid guess who gonna have to pay it yeah. like, you know what I'm saying like yep. so I hear you 
but can't do that on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. And what, then it's like women don't be having no hum- no humility in them. Mm-hmm. Like they they be really thinking like I'm the most important yeah. thing. I mean, I'll be a yeah. yeah, bitch. You just Wednesday. <laughs> You're, you're literally just Wednesday. I have another one of you scheduled Friday night. <laughs> you like you're not with me shooting in the gym right now. Yeah. You know no, what I'm sure. saying? You're not shooting in the gym. She don't know where the gym at. You're not plugging up the mics. You Is feel that, me? Because yep, yep, yep. I ain't heard you be like, you want me to come to the studio and like help you? Oh hell yeah! yeah. Take a fucking second. <laughs> yeah. Come through hell yeah! Get this shit on Man me. Man a camera or some shit like that. Uh, but all in all, man, in real life, like uh, it's a blessing. You know, I, we develop. I've developed so many different friendships uh, from the podcast space that then bled over into my personal life, mm-hmm. um, and like I'm thankful for yeah. like relationships that like possibly forever friends. And that's what I was going to ask that later on. I had that down, but we talk about now, like yeah, building those relationships from the podcast. Like, was it that one person or a couple people that you like? Damn, I didn't know like that interview or this sit down was going. You know, what I'm saying turn out to be. This is my dog or this is my home. Yeah, man, yeah. Really, for me, was the twins. Mm-hmm. Uh, they came along pretty early in our journey. They were like some of the first people to like want to advertise with us and like reached out. And that connection has been rock solid. Them, if them two niggas tell you that you can pull a put a put a truck on a duck and pull that bitch, <laughs> they 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 mean it. Yeah, you yeah. know they they helped us get Ty Mopkins in there. They helped us get the real Rick Ross and interview interview him. And they have been rock solid, man. Mm-hmm. And the twin, two relations, well, really three, I can kind of think of the twins, mm-hmm. uh, Jay and Trinidad Ant, because Ant was one of our guests real early on. Mm-hmm. And Jay and Ant struck lightning in the bottle with this week in culture. Mm-hmm. And one other person I can think of is like Curve, Marcus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's like a jack of all trades. Marcus know everybody. He can get you connected with everybody and he is just grounded and kind of like the the glue to help keep things together at times yeah uh the twins for show yeah. um i talked to marcus and um curve i mean curve a name tag we in a group chat we pretty much communicate every day on something mm-hmm. um the twin shit uh pharaoh um Cause like these people, I did not know before. Yeah, yeah before podcasting. Before podcasting, yeah. and then afterwards, and then some of their friends and families and others, they just branch out, and they're like, "Oh, you know this person, and you know this person," mm-hmm. and like it's it's you know it's kind of crazy, and like them relationships, you know, do add value to your life. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. When, they, when when a, when you going through something, and somebody come in check in, like them, you pick that up from the pot, like yo, I, I know this time of year is tough for you, and bliss or whatever, or whatever. Like it's it's so much stuff that's. Now it's in like intermingled. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's podcasting is a part of who I am. Yeah, for sure. You now. know, one thing that I that I think that we probably don't talk about enough, like men need other men to help keep them accountable at times mm-hmm. too. I know that like if I tell Jay I'm going to do some shit or take care of some shit, Jay got a way of making sure that like he talked to me and had the shit get, I call, I call it like babysitting. Cause like Jay know I'd be, you know, I'd be moving in and out. So like yesterday, I know we had to do this today. Jay made sure like, did I get you the address? You know, what time? Like he gonna make sure I'm there on time and like holding up my end of the bargain. If it's places that we got to be and we don't travel to get like, nigga, I like to smoke. I like to get high. You know, I be I be out in traffic. <laughs> yeah. Jay gonna make sure that like he check in. Like you know, we got such and such tomorrow at twelve thirty. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah nigga. Now, I'm, I'm just be, a very I'll time. Be like I calculate everything to the minute. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I gotta leave the house by nine seventeen <laughs> if I want to make it to here. Yep. I can spend time. I could be here picking up my equipment for seven minutes, mm-hmm. and then it's gonna take. Like <laughs> I don't know why it's been this way, man, but I just. That, that's how and, it is. And I'm the complete opposite. Like, nigga, I am, I'm never in a rush. You know what I'm saying? Like, I move, I walk slow, I drive slow, I get to places when I get there. Cause I'm like, nigga, the building's still gonna be there when I pull up. For so, sure. like, for me, if like we gotta be somewhere at 11, like, nigga, I gotta start my day at nine o'clock. Cause, like, <laughs> I need to spend a half hour in the shower. Man. And I need to, like, my, my timing look a lot different. Like, Okay, I know we going to the east side. I need to leave at 720 because, mm-hmm. like, I'm going to drive slow as fuck. <laughs> I know 94 going to be fucked, fucked up. up. Yeah, like, yeah, all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to move. A, I move a lot differently when it comes to time. Is that an airport over there? 
Used yeah, to that be. city airport. Okay. Yeah, it used to be a city airport, man, but now that mud just. I, I flew. I, I flew private out of city airport once. Straight up. Yeah, man. I used to. I had this mentor back in the day. You know, when I was young growing up, I used to believe like only like, and this may sound naive, but like I'm in my early twenties. Only niggas I knew that had money was like drug dealers, rappers, and athletes. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. I knew I wanted to own my own business, mm-hmm. but I never thought like that shit would get me like. Rich, rich. Yeah, I just yeah. thought it'd get me rich enough where I had to work for somebody. Mm-hmm. So back in the day, I was going to this church, and my pastor, one of his frat brothers, owned a business, and he put me in touch with him. He was like, "I know you got like entrepreneurial dreams, mm-hmm. you know, go go holler at him." I went and hollered at this man. He got a, he still got his office today on Dexter and Davison, and they make paper and plastic products. So like. He had a contract with DPS. So, you know, when you get, like, the fork knife, that little thin-ass napkin, Mm -hmm. and the salt and pepper, that's what they do at his office. So, like, I didn't know, like, and he was, like, making millions, like, living good, good as fuck. And I didn't didn't understand that, like, you could do other shit and make money. And I remember he had this situation. He had this deal on the flow. He was going to buy 10 churches chickens. Mm -hmm. So he was like, we're going to fly down to Atlanta, meet with churches, you know, do our business and we'll be back. In my mind, being young, I'm thinking we're going to be in Atlanta three, four days. Yeah. You know, we're going to see how the church is operating all that. He was like, no, meet us at city airport at 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. We're going to fly down. We're going to do our business. He said, you'll be back to have dinner with your family. <laughs> yeah, <we're going> <laughs> and I I had never, like, I heard rappers you can take off and touch down the same right night. Here. But I didn't think that, like, that shit was real. We flew private right off the east side, mm-hmm. was in Atlanta all day, ate in Atlanta, walked around. I saw what the whole... What kind of food ch- when you was in Atlanta? We had Popeye's. <laughs> <laughs> the, the church's nigga took us to Popeye's. <laughs> so, so we could see how the competition runs. Oh, shit. We was in the church's building all day, and he was like, y'all ready for lunch? And we went to Popeye's. Popeye's, dog. That's so, crazy. Dog, that's funny as hell. Showed man. us the whole operation gave us the layout for like how we was gonna have 10 churches chickens Mm -hmm. in the midwest area and shit man six o'clock that night i'm i'm back at home with my family with my wife and kids eating dinner like i i never (laughs) knew the like niggas was getting like money like that in the city because all you see is like all you see yeah for sure yeah so you know at 22 23 that like that was just an eye opening experience for me. So yeah, I remember I've flown out of city more than once. I've never seen it from this side. I usually I forget. I used to go over uh, my girlfriend at the time. Her 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 people stayed on like Flanders and Dickerson and shit. Okay. So I would come out deep east yeah. and I would pass the city airport. But I only seen it from one angle yeah. one time. I never seen it like in the neighborhood. How so, mad was it when you um, got that address that she stayed on the east side? Like damn, I gotta go over there. Cause well, like, this was, I was like. <laughs> I was like young, young okay, you know okay, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this one chick I was messing around with on North End. She gave me an address. I'm like, dog, I got to go over here for real. Like, like, like when I was say, younger, we play cards yeah. Yeah. like when I was younger, like that would be like a hindrance. Like yeah. you live on the east side. I, you good? I'm I'm straight. I don't I don't know how to make it there. <laughs> but then like I used to kick it with. So like I I dated this woman that was from the east side for a long time. And uh, she put me on the game. Like, nigga, I didn't know shit about here. I know we up the street from Randazzo's. Yeah. I'm going to hit that as soon as we leave. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my pops used to work over at WC3 on the east. Oh, yeah. So I remember, weird. like, pulling up on him every now and again for, like, lunch or something and learning the east that way. It's just, yeah. like, not favored by the Lord because <laughs> it's the east side. See, the only reason I knew about the west side was just going to Chick's house. That's yeah. it. Like, that's the only time I go to the west side is go over at Chick's house. Other than that, I'm, I was never over there. Like, man, when I was younger, though, I, I um, I was a lot more dangerous. Yeah, like so I would be, care. I would be random places. Like before, <laughs> like cell phones was like a thing, thing. Mm-hmm. Before I even was carrying a gun, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was just like, fam, why am I here again? <laughs> like no one knows that I'm here. Exactly. Like, you, just, you just figure it out. <laughs> I remember telling, I told this story on a pod the other week. I was dating this chick. She was thick than a motherfucker. She, her name was Antoinette. And yeah, this, this oh, is what to sound thick, though. This is this, <laughs> I do know a thick ass. Oh, this, this, this is when the Eminem show dropped because I remember listening to <laughs> to till I collapsed on her way over to the house, nigga. I pulled up on a block that had three houses, and when I got to her house, it was thirty nine niggas outside. Duh. She's like, "That's just my brothers and my cousins." Uh, and you know when hat. you and you know when you pull up, like you can't be no bitch, yeah. like. You gotta get, I got to get out of the car. Yep. I got to get out. The, like, 
Like them niggas from the porch. Who you here to see? Yeah, yeah. Antoinette. Hey, Antoinette. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga bang on the door. She like, I'll be out in a minute. So I'm just I'm yeah. just standing out there with it was legit 30 niggas outside. <laughs> It was so crazy. I was on the last pod. I was telling you about like how my Thanksgiving went. Yeah, that's kind of like what happened the other <laughs> night. Dude. I didn't know it was no. I pulled up at the sister house because I and I, the window was open. Right, it's dark, so you can see everything. It's niggas everywhere. I'm like, that's like y'all really living in poverty. To, I was supposed to pull up right quick. Yeah. So, you know, and this is this is different. And then she said, like, where you have like. I'm parked out front, like Nick. I'm not coming fine. Come inside. It's Thanksgiving. He says, "Like I'm not. I wasn't prepared to meet niggas today, and definitely not nigga niggas." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, nigga, you could come out here and and walk me in. What Man. the fuck is you? <laughs> nah, it's four o'clock in the say morning. I'm playing spades. Like, like, no, that's funny as hell. But no, you had said something about uh, going somewhere without having a phone. It's crazy nowadays because my son' phone went dead one time. I went into panic mode. I'm trying to call him, yo, where the fuck this little nigga? He supposed to be here, you know what I'm saying, such, such time. But we was really traveling, just going places. No phone. Mom can't get in touch with you until you got back home. Yeah. Like, that shit was wild if you think about that. I had, a, I had a pager at one point, but I mean, still, I need to make it to a, <laughs> a, pay, a, phone. a pay phone or something. And if the bat, if that double-A battery died, I don't have, I don't have shit. But, like, that's, to me, I think that was the advantage of us growing up. Like, we grew up street smart. Mm-hmm. Because like you knew certain cues, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. I remember I always kind of like fashion the shit to like when I used to go to the barber shop. Like there was like grown at like I'm 15, 16, but there are grown ass men here mm-hmm. having grown men conversations, mm-hmm. grown men beef. I remember niggas coming to the barber shop, shot, stabbed, and like you know it's I, that's when I knew like yo it's some real shit going on outside but you had to have your antennas up yeah. also so you knew how to navigate certain Wasn't shit. Wasn't it like an unspeak like you just knew when not to talk and yeah. not to jump in exactly. uh, uh, and certain yeah. folks bitch. Yeah, don't say shit. Yeah. Like there's some grown ups having a real conversation I'm just gonna sit there and shut the fuck exactly. up and listen. Take, and you so know, can get it. Yeah, and, it. I, and I remember like I told you like my first experience with weed like, my homeboy brother was going to jail. Mm. He gave us, like, nigga, an ounce of, like, br- brick weed. And if you <laughs> if you, if you smoke, you know where brick weed is. <laughs> he gave us an ounce of that shit. I, I took it to the barber shop because, like, me and this nigga didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. So the, my barber was like, y'all just keep this here. Mm-hmm. We'll keep it here for safekeeping. And they sent us on a dummy mission to go get baggies. Yeah. They was like, no, you got to go to like, you know, Office Max, <laughs> Circuit City. Like, nigga, Circuit we, City, damn. We, we, hitting up, we hitting up Staples. We hitting up all these stores. <laughs> like, yo, y'all got the little bitty baggies. And they was like, what are y'all talking? Like, you know, <laughs> fucking with us. The little wee baggies. <laughs> Cause he told us he was like, "No, nah, y'all go there and tell them like you need office like the little baggies for like they put staples in and uh, I need a little bag and pa- of staples and, and paper clips in them, <laughs> nigga. We hitting every office max, fucking staples. Like we come back to the barbershop maybe a day later, let they on the floor dying laughing because because <laughs> we we like we couldn't find the shit. Like where you get where you get the little baggies from." So now, like, well, just give me the weed back. It was like, yeah, we watched <laughs> the weed for you, and we watched it go away. Yeah, we, yeah. But like that, it was it was this shit. Was a, a turning point in your life, yeah. Right? It was because I knew I didn't know. I knew then, like, I don't know. I don't know how to sell drugs. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you could have end up being like. Like on some fresh shit in the movie. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I gotta get my payback. Or like, <laughs> that's not really life for me. You no, know it, it wasn't. <laughs> but but they was also older niggas like looking out for me. Like this, like yeah, we gonna yeah, send yeah. this nigga on the. We he, they sent me and my homeboy on a dummy mission. We yeah. 15, 16. Like they was protecting us from shit. Yeah. Where the fuck was they get those little bags from though? <laughs> you gotta know a liquor store. Oh, you gotta know a liquor store. Somebody like you got an individual lashes. Yeah, you, you got you gotta know somebody at that point. You but probably, like, probably nail supply shop. You know, because yeah. them little bag used to have a little rhinestones oh, yeah, and shit. Yeah, My cousin yeah. used to do nails and shit. And yeah. Her little rhinestones and and different nail designs would be mm. in them little baggies. But like you say, you you learn how to navigate. You know when to talk, when to listen, mm-hmm. when not to say shit. And I remember like I felt like they looked at us as little niggas for like a long time because mm-hmm. we was like friends of like other niggas brothers and like to them we was a little niggas and I remember I vividly remember the day like I wasn't a little nigga to them. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz like all, all the older niggas 
I always remember like there was an older light skinned nigga that used to come in. He used to always get a ball fade and a facial. Yeah. And I used to always ask my barber, like, can I get a facial? And he's yeah. like, he's like, ain't nothing wrong with your skin. You a little nigga. You like yeah. right. yeah, exactly. you, you, you don't need that shit. And I remember sitting in a chair one time and I was like, you know, I want to get a facial. Yeah. His name was Jody. Like yeah. Jody used to get facials. <laughs> and Jody was in the barber shop and he was like, Go ahead, like yeah. make sure, hook them up. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, I'm yeah, not a little yeah, nigga yeah. no more. Like, I'm not a little that's nigga a, no that's more. Check moments, yeah. Yeah. Like, check still out a little man. bit, like man. That's like when you can play on the card table with your parents and stuff. When you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because I could never play spades and tunk with my, you know, my mom and dad and all them people. Dog, I got to sit back and just chill and watch. Then when I was able to go ahead and play cards, I feel like, all right, I grew up a little bit. Then I can shoot dice. Oh, shit, I'm old now, nigga. I can shoot dice with y'all niggas too. Man, Make some money for sure. Or like when you you recognize like. You ain't at the kid table in the exactly. yeah. cameras no more, yeah. and yeah. now they passing you a drink. You know what I'm saying? Or like, like what you drink? Like, red? You yeah. know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. Hell yeah. I remember the first time I smoked the blunt my mom, dog. Oh, that's crazy. That joke's crazy. <laughs> this nigga was there, dog, because this is my mama's younger, you know, younger brother. And um, she was, I forgot, y'all was smoking Reggie's, dog. It was something before Kush, though. But whatever it was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> whatever it was, you know that shit. really came from Afghanistan? <laughs> that's why they called it again. Never want to know. Yeah. Man, I was stuck in the shower for about, if to me, it felt like two days. But it was really like five minutes. But it's like, yeah, I thought I was going to die, bro, like everything, man. That was like the worst. That's why I knew I couldn't smoke weed because it just, that shit, man, had my, my mind elsewhere, dog. But you had to grow up and navigate differently, you know, how we grew up. And and I think that that was our advantage. These kids, they tech smart, you know what I'm saying? They, they book smart, mm-hmm. but like... Like, I look at my oldest, like, I love him to death. He book smart, nigga, smart, way smarter than I was at yeah. 20. But, like, I knew how to navigate the streets. I knew mm-hmm. he ain't never rode the bus. Mm-hmm. You know what Damn. I'm saying? I yeah. get a bus route and be at some chick house and then make it back home. Like, I knew how the buses ran. I knew yeah. how the streets ran. And being outside, like, we talk about, like, nigga, I'm out. Like, nah, nigga, you just, outside. you really had to be out there yeah. and experience that shit. I no, told that sure. nigga all the time, like, nigga, if I had Facebook in high school, like, nigga, I'd have fucked half of Detroit. <laughs> yeah, like, sure. like, I had to, you had to go places to where girls were at, yep. know how to talk to we'll them. Work on your interpersonal sec- skills. Secure yeah. the number, and then, like, nigga, still, you gotta still see them after that. Hey, like, you gotta call, like. Um, can I please speak can I, to can I please speak to Tiffany? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, how you doing, Miss Jones? Yeah, there was a barrier. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I didn't cell phones. You got a direct connect. My daughter eleven got a cell phone, yeah. but like nigga, there was there was that barrier in the way, and you had to learn how to navigate that shit. You yeah. got to talk. Call me at my auntie house. You now you calling a different number yeah, yeah. and talking to a now different got, person. Yeah, yeah. Hello, a different that? adult. Yeah, no, I'm on the phone. Call her back. Damn. Then you don't know. Now you scared because you don't know when to call back because yeah. you don't want to call too early. But then you don't want to take too long. Like, <laughs> come get the phone. This little nigga keep calling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tiffany, that little boy on the phone. <laughs> he called two times an hour. Like, dog. That's it, crazy. But you hoping she call you back before you got to call back. I'm trying again. to get my Mac on. You know man, for sure, man. Now, y'all spoke on, you know, say 2024 being a, um, a big year for y'all, you know what I'm saying? And things y'all going through now. But what is something that you feel that still might be holding y'all back a little bit that y'all still need to work on? Uh,. I just so in real life it's kind of like on the production side of things it's just bandwidth mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying uh cuz we still got to do everything so audio video so it's not like I'm not the talent that I can just show up mm-hmm. talk and get the fuck on yeah yeah you know yeah, what I'm saying a lot more shit to do yeah but I found uh some some new productivity tools that have made my life a little easier. Okay. Um so I think that's kind of like freeing up. But like being able to just like be the talent mm-hmm. is different, you know what I'm saying? Because now you just can't do a podcast. You got to you got to be a fucking social media market manager, <laughs> <an> advertiser. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, let me get these links up. Let me put these videos up. Let me put the captions up mm-hmm. like Man, I just I, I just really want to get this shit off. Yeah, but you, it's it, it, so much on. it's so much other stuff that's involved. Yeah. So in real life, building an actual building a team is actually the thing that I'm looking to do mm-hmm. uh, next year. So it's like we can focus on being talent, or somebody can focus on like, yo, what you know what you gather topics for us, and then we'll decide which one day of which yeah. we want to go through. So like to to free up. Uh, some creativity space, some more time, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. 
and uh just visibility man because like we got a tried and true method you know what i'm saying i see the numbers i see the retention rates i see what they do year over year like i know the product mm -hmm. is a good product you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so now it's just about um marketing and putting us in front of um new eyes mm -hmm. in, in a different way yeah because that's it also like because i still work in corporate america mm -hmm. it's it's almost it's almost a hindrance like I can't go full nigga on the pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cause like, and I'm still hiding it from people at work. You feel me? <laughs> Believe it, like some of like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, if I can get, release the barrier, exactly, oh, yeah. we can oh, turn all yeah. the way the fuck up. Cause like, oh, I can be like, yo, these white motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, I'm just playing. But like, it, whatever. <laughs> like sometimes it's like, yeah, I do still. Yeah, gotta keep a uh, keep, yeah guard up a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. For me, I think it's like the social media aspect. That's something that I want to pass on to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And like, nigga, you come up with with the pictures and the captions. and the captions that make niggas want to, you know, tune in. Like that, that ain't where. Like I'm personable, but like I don't, I don't have like the strongest grasp on that. And then, like what Jay say, like I work a corporate job too. Mm -hmm. Like at this point, nobody from my job has found like i got one employee that found it mm -hmm. and i blocked her ass and i told her like you you trying to follow me again i'm going to hr but like for the most part nobody has an idea what i do of what we do mm -hmm. and there's like you know some safety in the and in the anonymity of things mm -hmm. but then like i look at it on the flip side like nigga i was just out the other night at Burlington, legit looking for some sheets. Yeah. And like a nigga walked up on me. He was like, I saw a nigga kind of like looking at me from other aisles. So I didn't know like if it was like, you know, game time. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah. So the nigga finally walked up on me. He was like, hey, you, you one of them podcast niggas. And I would like to be like, yeah, what? I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, hand, hand on my hip. Cause yeah. like, I don't know where this is going, but like, I'd like to be, you know, more free from like the nine to five space and mm -hmm. be able to be out here more like on the real shit, man. I'm just a loud mouth nigga from the West side. Mm -hmm. When people recognize me, like the shit is still crazy mm -hmm. to me because like, I don't, in, you got kids yeah. and kids are humble. You, mm -hmm. you know, I tell my kids all the time, like they see certain shit. They see certain shit online. They see podcast shit. My daughter would be like, why would people take time out of their day to listen to you talk? I'm like, I'm the nigga in the street. Baby. You don't no, even know. Like, like when people, like when people stop and talk to me and like, I'm with her, she was like, you know, why do people want to talk to you? I'm like, I'm really I like, I never want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. That's her thing. I'm like, like I'm a cool nigga. Like, I'm really like, you know, a somebody. And she's like, you know, so to get out of that nine to five space, to move a little bit more freely for us to, talk and move freely but i got i got faith that man like come 2024 like we gonna kick some doors open and That's we sure. and we gonna need a team yeah. you know what i'm saying like we starting to build it now but like look man i want to make money with my niggas mm -hmm. i want to win with my niggas i want to eat with my niggas mm -hmm. i want us to be able to celebrate thanksgiving together i want me and my niggas to be able to travel together man. 20 deep us and our families you know i want to keep the money in between us and we continue to grow and i'm praying that next year like bring some of those opportunities for sure hell yeah hell yeah man hell yeah hope, hope those blessings come our way too q <laughs> but uh i know y'all into you know saying to the rap music you know saying y'all love rap music so mm -hmm. y'all talk about it a lot if you had to tell somebody about yourself only using a rap song or a rap album what would that song or rap album be that's going to describe jay and dang you ain't got to tell me a separately word. or collectively. Sure, we can do both. Okay. Me and every day, yeah, yeah. What's so, the group? Yeah. as soon as you press play, this is you. I ain't got to say a word. This is me. Bam. Man, that's pretty interesting, man. Because uh, and I, it could be different phases of your life too. Yeah, because in different up. phases of my life, it, it's differently. You know, I want to throw out there one thing collectively because I felt like this album was really like the turning point in our friendship too. Mm good kid mad city yeah because like me and jay used to work together and we used to always talk about the podcast shit boxing we didn't know we didn't necessarily know we was gonna go into podcasting per se mm -hmm. but we used to always talk about boxing battle rap rap music 
And I remember this is back when like the blogs was like banging heavy when Good Kid, Mad City came out. And I had it early. Mm. And I used to always talk to, me and Jay would always talk about hip hop. And I remember coming to him, I was like, no, nigga, this is, this is it. Yeah. Like, and this I, is. I refused to listen to it early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you wanted to wait till it I came out. I wanted to wait till it come out because I'm like, you know, when you start hearing three or four songs off an album, mm -hmm. like on Hip Hop DX, um, allhiphop.com, Hip Hop Game at the time, during this time frame, them was the websites you go to, li to listen to the stuff. But I'm like, no, I want to hear it all together mm -hmm. because. Um, section 80 was so fucking great to me. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. And he was like, nah, Good Kid Man City might be better than Section yeah. 80. I'm and like, nah, get the fuck out of there. I, I, had it for like, I had it like three weeks before it came out, so I was listening to it. Mm. And Jay, like, refused, like, nah, I gotta wait, I gotta I'm wait. wait. Yeah. And I was like, no, nigga, when you hear it, like, this is, like, nigga, this life-changing shit. Like, <laughs> this life-changing hip-hop. I'm like, I was, at to me, I was like, nah, nigga, this, like, Jay, Big, Tupac-type shit. You mm. need to listen to it. And when he finally like came around, I remember us having those conversations, and that was like really when we kind of started like mapping out what the pod was gonna look like. Okay. So look, man, this is crazy. So we started our podcast June of 2016, June 15th or some shit like that. That that weekend of 2016, I had wanted to start the podcast like two years prior to, yeah. like in 2014. I had an idea to start it. Cause I had just got into podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like I was listening to the serial podcast. Mm -hmm. and that's like one of the, the biggest podcasts ever. Right. It was a crime shit. Okay. And, um, I felt like I was one of the, I didn't want to become this, man. I felt like I was becoming this. So like me and Dane would talk about shit. Like, man, we should do a podcast and you niggas don't even really know what a podcast mm -hmm. is at that time. But I felt like I was always talking to him about a thing that I was going to do, yeah. but I wasn't never yeah, actually yeah. doing it. Wait, wait, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Fuck it. One day I'm just going to buy some shit. I'm like, yo, come over here at this day and I'm just going to do it because I didn't just, I just didn't want to be the nigga, nigga, one day we going to do this. For sure. And like, I just, we just pulled the trick and we've been doing it ever since. But like, the Good Kid Man City on that music tip, that is a really, that is a really apt if I was to use that one, because I do feel like I'm a good kid in the mad city. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen so much wild shit and participated in some wild shit too. Mm -hmm. But like, yo, this is, this is fucking, <laughs> this is fucking crazy. Yeah, sure. And like, you just navigate in life yeah. as somebody coming up, like which, which way do I want to yeah, exactly. go? Left, Cause right. some of the family doing this, yeah. some of the young, some of the homies doing this yeah. shit. Like when, um, when he in the car talking about I almost caught my first case mm -hmm. on home, but like, I've literally been in the car like, nigga, this shit. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if, I mean, there's so many times that I could have been in prison right now. Also, not because I did some shit, just but I was somewhere. a part of some shit that just happened mm -hmm. was on the way to, yeah. or was with, like, fam, if, if we would have turned this way instead of that way, the police would have been behind us and we was all done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever was in the car or whatever happened, like, it's so many different shit. So, like, I could really relate to, like, mm -hmm. And then the backseat freestyle, cause yeah. I rapped. We had I did music the whole nine yards. Had a company doing music, but like that shit was so real to life. So I had, a, a, I, I agree. So if it was on some um, collective shit, it'd be yeah, good for, kid, Mad City for sure. Now, if I'm thinking about just like solo shit, I mean, even though this album is fairly new, like I felt like this nigga took pages out of my life when mm -hmm. he did it. That Killer Mike Michael. Mm -hmm. Like that shit, like when I think about like songs like Slummer, like I remember being 15, Whew. you know, fucking with chicks and having pregnancy scares. Mm -hmm. Shit, man. When he talk about shed tears and he was like, you know, women put you through some shit because you laid with them. You never loved them. And now you made a child out of that. Mm -hmm. shit. Like, nigga, yeah. I like shit like that was real to me. And then like, you know, something for the junkies. Mm -hmm. Like, nigga, for me, that's a church. Like, that's a church song. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. You know, I'm. You can talk about Fabo and geeked up, but like when that nigga crying out, like nigga, I hope my mama don't, don't die. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know niggas that like been through that. Like I've been with homies and their mamas and their cousins or their daddies overdosing. Mm -hmm. You know, my own uncle, I love him to death. Nigga, crazier than a motherfucker and stole from me. <laughs> you know all of that shit. But like nigga, I've seen that nigga ups and downs when it come to drugs and even though we not as close as i wish we could be like for a long time that was my man's mm -hmm. and like i you know i i don't want to wish bad on on nobody but i could see 
Like if you t- if I got a call and somebody told me that he overdosed, it, it wouldn't be, be like, oh my yeah. god, I can't believe it. Yeah. Like I'd be fucked up about it. And like I, you know, I don't I don't talk to him for months at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, he got a daughter, my cousin. You know, me and her aren't necessarily close. We 17 years apart, so mm-hmm. she closer to my son age mm-hmm. than she is to my age. I ran into her at Target, and yeah. she acted like I, she didn't know who the fuck I was. Yeah. And like. You know what? But when I look at like a, a album like that, it talked to me because like nigga, that's like those are parts of my life. And I remember I tweeted Killer Mike. I was like, nigga, I felt like you opened up some pages and wrote about it. And he, you know, responded back to that shit. But like, I feel like an album like that really speaks to speaks to me. Yeah, yeah, shit, damn. Uh, on a on a on some shit, I just have to say because like this is probably like the core of who I am. Uh, Dame's All gonna, eyes on me. No, but Dame's gonna Dame's gonna hate this. <laughs> but like in real life, like I'm a giant cannabis fan. Okay, you feel me? Yeah, like yeah, you first person I've heard say that. Like <laughs> the last, he'll be the last person you hear say that shit. I'm, I'm, Nobody I'm, talks about cannabis I'm, career. I'm, I'm dead ass. You know what I'm saying? And like it'd be so wild, and I still listen to this day. Mm. Like I'll be listening to some shit from '98 or from 2001, 2002, and they'd be talking about shit that like I finally understand now. Yeah. I'm like the holder of a bunch of random useless information <laughs> yeah. right and it's like oh shit this nigga talking about the human genome theory this nigga was right yeah. or this the fucking tetrahedrons and like it's it's so much stuff like uh, the randomness of those yeah. that you just seeming, now understand the seamless seemingly random bars about yeah. nothing was always about something mm-hmm. <laughs> and like <laughs> the randomness of me it seemed random as fuck but like it's always about for sure it's always something like it'll yeah. it'll make sense in the future. Yeah, I get. I mean, we never have a campus for <laughs> We never will again. I promise you, you so, never will so again. So those are the albums that, you, that that really like I press play. This is this is your yeah. Those those three albums. I think about albums like I grew up with that probably had like a lot of influence mm-hmm. in there. You know, what's the album you feel like changed your life? Oh man, <laughs> niggas straight out of Compton. Mm-hmm. death certificate mm-hmm. I remember listening to Ice Cube and thinking that nigga was gonna kick in our front door and kill my whole family <laughs> like that's like I believe that shit like I had never like I heard people cuss mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like you a kid you hear people cuss but like straight out of Compton a crazy motherfucking name Ice Cube yeah. like yeah. like yeah. nigga for me though like a crazy <laughs> Compton like I thought Compton was hell on earth yeah. but like even though Ice Cube was talking that gangster shit, mm-hmm. like he was spitting a lot of knowledge yeah, same in time there too. You know, a lot of a lot of old Farrakhan. When I think about like Scarface, like man, like when I think about like rap music that that changed my life, I could like close my eyes mm-hmm. and envision myself there. I thought I like when I listened to Scarface rap. Like I remember being a little kid in my room with a with a Walkman, mm. and I could close my eyes. Like nigga, I'm in Southside. Yeah. Mm. You know when I listen to Ice Cube, nigga, I'm in, I'm in Compton. Yeah, you know what I'm sure. saying? Like when I listen, I remember when I used to when I when I went to Cass, I'd have to ride the bus home. That's an hour bus ride from Cass to my parents' house. Mm. And I remember I would listen to Nas, Illmatic. Yeah. Like nigga, I felt like I'm riding on the I'm riding on the train looking at, you know, yeah, looking sure. through Queens Bridge cuz like that's how the music was talking to me and mm. like they were they were like poets. They were they were like speaking some shit that like you know, Detroit rap wasn't what it is now. Mm. And even Detroit rap still got a long way to go, but like it was it was so introspective and detailed like Yo, like that shit took me to another. Like that hour went yeah. went by. Yeah. yeah, you say Illmatic. I remember that for a long because I thought Illmatic was his dopest album, but to me it was it, it was written, it was better. I hear a lot of people say that. Um, it's crazy too because so many people say that, and then the famous line from Jay Z talking about you had one hot album for every yeah. ten year average is like you know that's a lot because yeah. a lot of niggas the the number one album is Illmatic. It's one of the story ones, but like the second one. People say it's even greater than the other one. So how do you say yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That's I, fucking crazy, nigga. I remember playing JV football, and a nigga came in for practice that morning and had Illmatic had just dropped. Mm. Nigga came in late for practice that morning and put that shit on in the speaker in the locker room, and like nigga, that that was the first time I like the Nas and Lauren Hill. I don't think was even out yet, 
and that was like the first time I heard that shit. I'm like, this nigga Nas is incredible. Hell yeah, that's my dog, man. But nigga, it's the fake thug, no love. You, you get, get the slug, see me for gusto. You like, that's how me. the album start yeah. off. Like, nigga, I was like, yo, as soon as I get off, <laughs> I'm taking the bus to Damon's. I'm going to pick that shit up and take the bus back home. Yeah. Hey, guess that bus get a CD deal, oh, man. I'm already... On some music that, like, trying to change my life shit, mm -hmm. uh, it is what it is. So, like, I listen to uh, all this shit, right? But, like, 97, 98, mm -hmm. my cousin let me hear a track off the Lost Boys Love, Peace, and Happiness. Mm -hmm. And it was um, Beast from the East. Mm -hmm. It had... Cannabis. It had... Uh, <laughs> Cannabis, A plus, Red Man, and Mr. Cheeks. Okay. And Cannabis verse, he dropped fifty bars, mm -hmm. and it was the best shit I ever heard in my life. Yeah. Right. And at that particular moment, everything else sounded whack to me. Mm -hmm. Like I listened to DMX faithfully yeah. every single day, but like the the differences in rap music, it was a vast difference between I'm putting a couple words together mm -hmm. and then this yeah. shit, and like that shit made me. Yeah. Like want to rap, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and like the type of shit I started listening to, and like I fell into the backpack mm. rap thing versus. I think it was, me and my brother had every single No Limit album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a fucking gold <laughs> no chain yep. with a No Limit charm on that motherfucker. We both had one. My What's brother up? had a diamonds. I didn't have no diamonds. You feel me? <laughs> Little but like, that boy. We listened to everything, but I didn't listen to music. Like the same. Yeah. Now, big has always been big. You feel mm. me? Uh, life after death has always been life after death and everything like that. But I started listening to music like differently, and it changed my life because in high school, eleventh grade, it show I start rapping with mm. my friends, and then we start putting things on tape, mm. and then we start putting out projects, and then we have a company, and yeah. we putting out music, and like it literally did change my life when I actually got involved. Yeah. In music and ultimately led to this podcast on some yeah. other shit, but like that in itself specifically, it literally changed mm. how I looked at and listened to music and how I kind of like viewed it. Like, oh, what y'all niggas doing is cool, but like yeah. somebody like yeah, yeah, for sure, he do something different, yeah, yeah, and then it, different. it leads you into other other MCs, yeah. other types of shit. And I started going back and listening to Corrupt. Like, yo, Corrupt actually always been like no, mad sure, lyrical, yeah. and like we was just so in. Throw about it, the gin and the juice, but we yeah. really wasn't paying attention to like his astronomical, yeah. phenomenal, rap, <laughs> surgical, mathematical nigga, raps. And shit. Nigga, like, we still like me and Jay got like some running shit. Like I walk in the studio, I'll be like, "Dad's and corrupt, corrupt and dad." <laughs> like, like <laughs> streets is a motherfucker. Woo. Was a I, that shit was crazy. What was your uh, rap name, Jay? Uh, Jay Johnson. Uh, that was your rap name? Yeah, for sure. I've been Jay Johnson. Uh, technically, I used to have like. Like in like eleventh grade. Come on, come on. I had this one rap name. Come yeah. on. Cause this was like <laughs> I was heavy into it was heavy into like super duper battle rap. J paragraphs. No. <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> I don't think I ever said it. <laughs> it was kill catastrophe. <laughs> kill catastrophe. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. kill catastrophe. But it went to Jay Johnson rule. I've just been me myself the whole time. You nigga, I used to I used to rap under the name the terrorist. Mm. And then them, the then, 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 them like plan, then them planes hit that tower, and I was like, "That shit not oh, yeah, gonna that, work, yeah, my yeah, nigga." Because yeah. we got a couple years on you, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure, yeah. Like the the music was just different. Yeah. Like all this cool shit that niggas listen to now, niggas be lying. Niggas did not like Jay Z like this. No, for sure. all the the MCs. They hated Jay Z. They hated Puffy. They stood for the establishment. Mm -hmm. And now niggas act like they loved them the whole exactly. time. No, the exactly. fuck y'all did. Like y'all didn't. Now, I know like, for a fact you remember your first eight bars or your first rap. Give it to me. <laughs> uh, I don't. The first rap. The first one you remember. I do remember one with Killer. This is crazy. It's a couple lines, though. A couple of lines. Though, a couple of lines. <laughs> Yo, it was something like Killer Tashapi or Blasting Ease and Seas with Speed Spitting Rapidly, trying to last me, little class me, sweet, sweet, that nigga, sweet rhymes make a nigga catch cavity or some shit. I was like, a, I was like 15 years old. You know what I'm saying? Well, what well, about you, remember, Dan? I cannot remember my first my first rhymes yeah. like when i think about like because we wrote them shits on paper yeah <laughs> like you know what i'm saying so when you ain't got the paper no more it's like yeah. <laughs> like i had rhyme notebooks like like nigga i wasn't going like i was going to high school to talk to girls write rhymes and yeah. kick it with my niggas like i was not trying to do no work yeah. i wasn't trying to like 
I'll be honest, like nigga, like graduating was like, eh, if it happened, Maybe, yeah. <laughs> you know, if it, but then like my mama kind of like put her foot on the back of my head and mm-hmm. was like, nigga, you going, you going to graduate. Cause like, I remember thinking of like, I, so I got kicked out of chaos twice. Mm-hmm. My mom, you know, through God's grace and knowing people that she knew made sure I graduated mm-hmm. from there because like my other option was Redford. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if niggas remember like neighborhood high schools, yeah. but like my girlfriend went to red, all my niggas went there. Like there's no way I would have made it out of Redford. Yeah. Like I wouldn't have. I got kicked out of cash too. I ended up graduating from Cody though. Okay. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have been night schooling it like a motherfucker at, at best. So, uh, yeah, man, I can't even remember. I didn't even of, rap at Cass. I said 11 and 12 grade at I, Cody. I did rap at Cass because, like, I remember we used to, like, do the talent shows real heavy. Mm. Uh, I had a part. I had a partner of mine. So, like, I, Fat Ray. I went to high school with Ray. Mm. Uh, There's another nigga around here named Cliff Notes. He's, like, a couple years yeah. older. But Cliff mm. used to rap. Uh, but, like, fat, me and Fat Ray was in the same grade. Our nigga Simon... And there was like another nigga we used to roll with, and we used to rap real heavy. Yo, and the niggas from Cavs, IRS, yeah, Ill Rhymes Society. There was a year. <laughs> un, they was a year under us. Woo! Dave I, and them was like a year under us. We, I'm, I they, found that shit on Apple Music not too long ago. Like they was good, that nigga. They was good, <laughs> but like. Well, like I had a I had a partner, me and my nigga, uh, me and my nigga. It was another nigga I knew named Jay, and we had this group called Twice as Trife, and I, I know it's a terrible rap. No, name. but that's a good that rap name in the nineties, nigga. That's a rap name for the nineties for and, sure. And I, and I remember we signed up for this like battle rap competition, cause I knew Jay could like rap, but he wasn't like a battle rap nigga. Mm. But like we signed up for this competition. And like I think the prize was like five hundred dollars. And like nigga That must well be ten thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, sure, and like ninety seven, ninety eight, I'm sixteen years old, like five hundred like I knew we mean this nigga would have to split the money down the middle, mm. but like nigga two hundred I wasn't making two hundred fifty dollars a month mm-hmm. working at Wendy's. So like nigga, this was life changing money. And I remember going into it, I'm like, nigga, if we make it past the first round, I remember telling that nigga, I'ma carry us to the victory. <laughs> and nigga, we made it past the first round and I was Oh uh, I was I was killing and I remember there was some nigga he, could rap actually. Right? Yeah. And I, I still kinda fuck around a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I remember there was some nigga that went to like Mumford and he was always talking about how he had a deal with like uh, flip mode. He mm-hmm. was gonna be sign- Buster Rhymes was gonna yeah. sign, and he rapped just like Buster Rhymes. And this nigga was getting on my motherfucking nerves, cause like we would have to have like, like you know, Detroit rap then was primitive. Mm-hmm. Like we'd have to have like all these meetings about like you know when the show comes up and what we can and can't do. I'm like, I'm like, look. I cuss when I rap. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a fuck about this kitty shit. <laughs> like, nigga, I'm out to get this money. And I remember the last <laughs> round was me and this, like, Buster Ryan. And, like, that shit doesn't transfer <laughs> over <laughs> well <laughs> in a battle rap situation. And I remember I had this line where, like, uh, I'm, I'm like a dog that ain't been fed for seven days. And all I've been eating is raw meat and razor blades. And, like, that shit, like, sent the room into a frenzy. And when she bought me that check, like, nigga, all I could see was, like, the crowd and the money. And I'm like, nigga. Publicist Clearhouse check. I'm like, nigga, we. No, it was a big, dumbass check like that. And I told my nigga Jay, I was like, dog, we all, we all. Like, nigga, nobody knows us outside of this room. I'll go back to school the next day. You know what I'm saying? This is this Friday. We go back to school Monday, <laughs> nigga. All I got, to, I didn't already cash the check. Man. We didn't already split up the money. All I got to show for it is a pair of Tims, a Jabot outfit, <laughs> and a Nautica jacket. No. Money gone. No, we money had, gone. It was some way them showcases. When, when Cody, we all got. <laughs> at Cody, we was, we we entered into the the school down the street uh, showcase. I ran track. I skipped the track meet and shit, right? We to go, go rap. Through, the hell yeah. To mm. go rap. I posted a picture of it recently and shit. Mm. Anywho, but like, we had the stage. We had a smoke machine. Mm. We had, back Yo, in the day, niggas had the low rider bikes yeah. that had to, that come out on the fucking stage. <laughs> we went to another high school, killed their motherfucking performance. Like, nigga, you couldn't tell me 
that we wasn't the new Wu Tang or yeah, some shit. Like sure. this shit was amazing. And then the next day, it was like, why didn't you come to the fucking game yesterday? Yeah. I was in trouble with my fucking like nigga. Nobody cared. Because we rocked the we, fucking we, senior luncheon. Like in yeah. we, school, we were so these niggas can rap. For we sure. was we were so young and rap was so primitive. It was a barrier of entry. Like now, you can just Google some shit on YouTube and you can find beats. No, nigga, I had to find a nigga. Like you had to know a nigga that did beats, and he probably did beats in his house. Mm-hmm. So you had to at least be in good enough to a nigga, to, a grown man, to let seven, sixteen, seventeen year old niggas to his crib. You know to, how I got to beats? listen to beats. I ain't had no money. There was two different joints on. Um, on Juvenile Fun and Degrees album, yes. at the end of the joint, like the beat played for like yep, I that. 24 bars. Like it was enough to rap off. And the IRS niggas, they album, one of them songs just had like a space for like a hook, a verse, and a bar. So we had the, you get the double decks, yep. right? You recorded that shit, and then I, you in a makeshift studio, but you like really in your in your mm-hmm. in your in your bedroom with a fucking radio yeah, and a, so. a horrible microphone, <laughs> just like rapping over a double deck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like, oh, them the two beats. Every word, every rhyme I'm getting Go is ahead. off of these you, two beats. You yeah. know what? What help is that me and Jay won that show, and like so people kind of knew that I rapped a little bit, mm-hmm. and like Fat Ray was my man, so like. That's a nigga that could vouch for me, and like I would be around them niggas. I like I wouldn't rap at the hip hop shop because I thought like them niggas was like superstar. Like I need to go Animals. back home. Like I remember seeing a young Elzai. I remember seeing Guilty Simpson says something about pushing niggas face first in the yellow snow, and I was like, Nah, I'm not ready. For <laughs> I'm not ready for these type of raps. Like these <laughs> niggas, these niggas is rapping, rapping. You know what I'm saying? So like, so, I, I can see that. I can see that, that whole little picture you holding that chick, man, just like hype as hell. Nigga, like, first I'm, of all, I didn't even have a bank account. My <laughs> mama had to cast the check. <laughs> Nigga, we had to sign that check. Like, I didn't understand signing a check over. So I thought, like, giving it to her yeah. was giving her the money. money yeah, it's and, like, she, she legit had to take, like... I didn't believe that she was going to give me the money to the point like she took me to Comerica with her. <laughs> like, you sign it, they're going to deposit it, and then I'm going to get the cash back. I'm like, today though, right? <laughs> like, we're getting the money, like, right now. But see, like, last week on the on the pod we dropped yesterday, technically, um, when we was talking about, like, kids rapping in school, like, like these stories, this feeling, yeah. it's not the same. Like it, it can't now them be, niggas still be rapping. I drop my daughter off to school every day. I'm niggas be outside. Niggas yeah, like, but it ain't that same. Like you said, carry your notebooks. Cause I remember even like I graduated oh four. I remember being in science class and everybody passing around their notebooks because they got their little raps and everybody reading them and you know, like that or going to bathrooms and niggas battling in the bathrooms. Like it's it's a little different, you know. What I'm saying today. like the style of rap that they do now, and is there a showcase? Is there a spot where people are like, yo, let's come over here and see who rap better? Mm. That's not like a thing. It's not the same. Now, it's not saying it's, it's better or worse. It's just not the same. No, you I know feel what I'm you. saying? Because, like, you. I don't. Your lyrical dexterity ain't what's being <laughs> judged right now. Yeah. You feel me? And so, the level of music, the Detroit music that's like popular right now. That'd be fresh, though. And talking about like, be all swagger. You're talking about then and, and, and now. How do y'all feel about. Detroit rap then and now, like the difference, and why do you think it is blowing up now the way it is? Is it because people ain't scared of us like they used to be? Uh, I think niggas have finally learned how to make good so- or songs that translate better. I can't say that all of them are good, but like there's a sound right now that's popular, yeah. and niggas have learned to ride that wave. You know, when I look at like a younger generation, T Grizzly when he dropped First Day Out. Mm-hmm. Like that song hit turn around. Yeah, that to me that was the turnaround mm. because like then people saw like like it's always been niggas here making music. There's yeah. always been, you know, the Blaze, Trick Tricks, Al Nukes, but like when I look at songs like Stretch Money, Take Money to Make Money, mm. you know, that was a turnaround. When I look at like first day out like those were like See, even, shits um, that kind of like put no the, song that try me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. Try cuz <laughs> niggas had it was it was nothing out that sounded like that. Dage had a co Dage had a hit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? She had a visual. She had it. Niggas didn't have the whole package. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think technology got a lot to do with it, because like growing up, 
everybody had East Side Cheddar Boys. Mm -hmm. Everybody had Rollies Don't TikTok. Like, everybody <laughs> had them tapes, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, the whole city knew every word. Like, every word. I don't ever think Big it Herc. was. A, yeah, like, everybody always fuck with the music. Now it's that, in the a whole fucking city, mm -hmm. when it's a million niggas in here, like, everybody fuck with the music, whether they can quote unquote rap or not. Like, we like this style. Mm -hmm. Now, the internet allows everybody else to hear that same shit. Like, it took a long, like, how would the real rollies don't TikTok, the tape, <laughs> make it to South Carolina? Yeah, yeah, you feel me? It's and then enough for it to, to yeah. or whatnot. But, like, now with the internet, yep. and now it's like, it's okay to embrace a quote-unquote local artist, mm -hmm. because that was the thing. You only could, like, an established yeah, mainstream, mainstream yeah. artist. Like, no, it's okay to, and local now is you just grew up in my same city. Mm -hmm. All of us are international. Mm -hmm. There's people in other countries that listen to your podcast for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you look at that fucking the, the mm -hmm. notes and be like, who fuck with us in Zimbabwe? <laughs> but shout out to them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like yeah, you're international. Now that technology shit, man, it's like the barrier entry is low. Mm -hmm. Like I, you can shoot a video, put that bitch on YouTube and Shoot it with your phone. With your yeah. phone, yeah, with your damn iPhone. <laughs> you your phone, some cheap editing software. And you out there and it wasn't always it wasn't always like that. I remember like go, like I said, like Big Gov used to produce. Mm -hmm. I remember going into that nigga house in his living room listening to beats because I knew his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my way, my way in. I remember I rapped on a hell of a beat in 03, nigga. <laughs> I remember record that bitch in the basement. <laughs> I remember before. like I, I used to intern at Nation Studios with Ivy Duncan. I remember like Royce recording Rock City out of that bitch. Mm -hmm. You know, D12 not even being signed yet, like coming to the studio and like fucking around with ideas. I remember seeing Eminem sneak in and out the studio, like just real low key. Mm -hmm. And he was just starting to bubble up himself. So I mean, rap look it just looked a lot different. And I want to sound like, you know, old nigga and back in my day, but like shit was just different back in our day. Mm. And like niggas now know how to make songs. They yeah. know how to, you know, find the right beat, do the visual, put it out there where we didn't have that knowledge on how to, you know, first of all, studio time used to be expensive as fuck. And you didn't, not all studios fuck with hip hop. Mm -hmm. You used to have to find producers, studio time, mixing and mastering, which niggas wouldn't always adept to mm -hmm. back then as well. Like that, that makes a huge difference yeah. in the song quality and then putting out like a visual. You can, if you got $1,500, you can, you can get yeah. you a, a, a decent video made. Mm -hmm. Shit, less than that. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. you can get, like, a nigga that's got, like, a name mm -hmm. to, you know, give it that look and shit. And it wasn't always like that. Yeah. I So, right now with the music, right now, I think uh, everybody has access to it. A lot of it sound the same. Some of it is really good, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I, only thing I think is missing <clears throat> right now are, like, Everything don't sound professional. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like somebody probably at some point got to say, um, yo, this song that's bubbling and is great. You release 10 of them, but only two of these sound this great. Yeah. Like how you make the actual song or is this actually mixed and master? Because mm -hmm. nowadays, since everybody listens to shit on headphones and yeah. shit like that, the professional portion isn't always there. And sometimes you, I just don't have the ability to do yeah. that. I'm a kid or I just don't got no money. Mm -hmm. um, I think the there the the behind the scenes stuff. If they put that push into some artists, man, it'll yeah. be it'll be great because it is some folks here who just catch lightning in the bottle and be like, they "Yo, this up. is this is it." Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah! Now to the podcast, man. You know, away from the music. Take take me back to episode one, June seventeenth, twenty sixteen. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, with, oh man! Fast forward, you know, y'all on 397 now. Like, just think about that time. Did y'all think did y'all still be going this long? Hell or, no! Like, and, and just talk about the goals that y'all have for the podcast that's different now than it was episode one, 2017, I 2016. Can, I can speak for me. I thought episode number one, we might do five or six of these bitches. <laughs> Jay was my man's. He was real passionate about it, and like. You know, he bought it to me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's my bro. I'm just going to humor this nigga till he get tired of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, first of all, we was recording on like Friday nights. 
And at the time when we first started recording, I had, you know, I was dealing with a little chick and like Friday night for a single man, that's, that's motherfucking prime time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, all right, we'll do this podcast thing. And, you know, I just figure after a couple, you know, I really thought after the first one, he just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> And then that nigga <laughs> called me up that next week, like Wednesday or Thursday with all these topics and like, what we going to talk about the, like this Friday. And I'm like, oh, we, we, oh, we, do, we doing this yeah. thing. And, wow, man. and that's how like it kept on because I'll be honest, even this year, I wanted to come to jail. I was like, man, maybe we should step back from shop talk and concentrate on. He did. This okay. week, yeah. And concentrate on this week in culture. Like, just think about it. I was like, Okay. But you're not part of this week in culture. No, no. But I just thought that was like... You thought that was like... Where is it, it was having a different trajectory, okay. in my opinion, just from the outside looking in. And I'm like, maybe that's the one. Mm-hmm. And even with Shop Talk, like I said, first episode I thought was grand opening, grand we're closing. Close. We're going to do this shit. Jay going to let it go. I didn't understand what a podcast was like you do it consistently. <laughs> I thought maybe we... You know, this might be like a once a month. We do this shit couple. You know, we not doing shit like we turn the mics on and have some jokes. But like, nah, that nigga was like, yeah, we gonna do this shit like next week. And then it just like kept becoming a a thing. Like Mm -hmm. it was week on week. And then it started becoming like, yo, we didn't even think about it no more. Like Friday, we we know we gonna connect. We gonna do the podcast. And we can laugh about it now, but like we made so many mistakes in the beginning, mm. fucked up the audio so, so many, many times. times. Nigga, I still make mistakes. You know what I'm uh, saying? But... Like, nigga, mics wouldn't even be on. <laughs> <laughs> we had that one time where we had good ass interview and the camera wasn't on. Like, oh, <laughs> nigga, that was that was us. We like our first when I thought like this is like our first big interview, nigga. Mics went on. Thankfully, we had the cameras on and we could match that shit up. But it was like we were making so many mistakes. Mm. But like we we just kept thugging it out. And like I know people would sound cliche, but like legit, you just got to keep going, you know, no matter what it looked like, because, you know, it's easy for people to shit on your dream and your vision because they don't they ain't in it. They don't get it. They don't mm. see it. You know, I didn't have so many people tell me like. You know, in the beginning, like, you know, why are you fucking with Jay? You should do some shit by yourself. Or, like, you know, this shit ain't really moving like that. Y'all not getting 10,000 listens. I remember when we used to get 100, like the 50 first, listens. Like that first episode, after, like, the first week, man, like, 36 listens or some shit like that. Mm. But, like, in in 2016, what only thing you can compare it to was... The there wasn't no like or the brilliant idiots yeah. you know i'm charlamagne and andrew show's yeah. podcast or whatever um and like it or uh combat jack yeah um there wasn't nothing out there and uh what's my uh cypher sounds and um oh, rosenberg yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Juan epstein Juan epstein or whatever like but like the thing with podcasts is one number's not published mm-hmm. you feel me like back in the day when everybody used to use soundcloud mm-hmm. you can go to their soundcloud mm-hmm. and see Oh shit! They doing two hundred fifty thousand a week, mm-hmm. but them niggas is already star. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, yo, what's so crazy is like I remember that that first day. The technically the first episode that we released or recorded was on a Saturday, but I dropped it that same night, right? Mm-hmm. And at that time it was like, oh well, if you drop on Saturday, you gotta always drop on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So like we gonna record on Friday next yeah, week, yeah. so I can like have some time to, sure. to do some shit. But it's like. Once I put that shit on the internet and put on Facebook at the time, because Instagram wasn't like yeah. like that like it is now, and people started like tapping in and listening and like providing feedback, I'm like, yo, this shit kind of this shit kind of feel good, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And like in real life, I'm learning this shit in real time, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like I always been technically inclined, um, but like one time one one week you know my mic might be louder than they might <laughs> they might be louder than mine or maybe we both just like we really learned this shit in real time mm. and people was they allowed us grace and someone like and yo they grew with us like yo um if this something something was off with the with the audio this week or or like it, it just was like man this is the i guess like the immediate feedback of mm-hmm. it and talking and like i'm a 
talker in general. So when people, when some, I, I'm the the conspiracy nigga, right? <laughs> and everybody, I'm crazy, blah blah blah. And then some shit come down. Everybody call me, be like, hey, what you think about? <laughs> so I'm having the same conversation 15 times a week. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? Y'all niggas just listen to the podcast. What's you got it? you got my thoughts on it. Yeah. And if you need to circle back, yeah, we can circle back. But it was just a, it was just such a. The time in podcast, it was just great early on. I remember when we, the first time we hit like a hundred listens, mm-hmm. I was like, man, we, we, in my mind, like we made it. Yeah, you think but about like, check again. But, but yeah, <laughs> but then, but then like I look to where we've grown to now mm-hmm. and how many people listening to us on a monthly basis. And it's, you know, it's a humbling experience. Cause like I said, at the end of the day, man, I've always been like a loud mouth kind of shit talking nigga. Like that's. Mm-hmm since I was a kid mm. and that's, and I'm still doing the same shit I'd have been doing, you know, whether we work together, whether I seen a nigga in a barber shop, you know, people just listening to, to two friends talk and had debates and having conversations. And sometimes we bring other people in on those conversations, but like, you know, this is what we was really doing. And just to see how people have gravitated to it, the love they've shown and how people have consistently been, been fucking with us the thing about like podcasting that's so different from music and things of that like i'm not giving you no album you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying like this we definitely know, get more streams than rappers though so. <laughs> may, maybe maybe so but like there's nothing <laughs> tangible you know that you you i'm we not touring yeah we had live shows and shit but like people are tuning in because they're genuinely interested and what we got to say and our point of view and they want to hear it from us. So it's always a humbling experience when I see those numbers. And now, like, I got a number in my head where I think me and Jay should stop. Mm-hmm. Like, this is, I've never shared it with Jay. This is just my personal number. Yeah. And I feel like by the time we get to this point, you know, hopefully we've reached a certain level of success. we got other stuff going on. But then, like, I look at it at the flip side, like, to me, podcasting is like hip hop. It still is. It's still really in its infancy. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's we we just yeah. forty two now, which is relative. I'm forty two, J forty one, which is relatively young. Could we do this another fifteen years? What would Shop Talk podcast look like then? But like, like we could. Joe Rogan did his podcast ten years for niggas knew who he, before the, the the people who knew who he was. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like he did it every day. You know who got more podcasts than Joe Rogan? Oh, yeah. Adam Carolla. Mm-hmm. Adam Carolla have been doing podcasting since since I can fucking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Adam Carolla ended up making his home fucking network. He do it daily now, but mm-hmm. like it's a whole thing. But like I've been listening to podcasts since podcast before podcasts were podcasts yeah, yeah, yeah. we also 100 percent did the first live show in detroit we did multiple live shows in detroit uh, we did our live show in 2017 april on my birthday april uh 2017 oh man that was um, a wild it's a it's a great time mm. uh we didn't did one at the charles h Wright museum for african-american history we didn't did a couple inside of um, our building and when people was like listen man y'all got me through the pandemic or every time i go to work i'm listening to y'all i was going through struggles and i just turned y'all on and y'all got me through such and such it's like oh shit we we, we legitimately yeah, yeah, serving like yeah, a big yeah, yeah. bigger purpose when somebody yeah. from louisiana reach out and be like man i ain't never been to detroit man but it feel like i'm an honorary sure. detroiter because of the the streets that y'all talking about the artists you're talking about like y'all put me on so much shit in detroit lingo and stuff like that like yeah. it's like oh shit this is like a bigger yeah it's a bigger thing than than I I I, I knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and um, speaking of like first episodes, you have a lot of people come inside your your your, your place mm-hmm. and record. Some people have two or three episodes and stop. Some people <laughs> some people have a lot. I mean, We've seen niggas break up on air. Yep. <laughs> Legitimately, I've seen two what? different pods break up on air. Yeah, your that, home girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you see with these people that walk in? Do you can you kind of like? Determined, like, oh, yeah, this ain't going to last too long. Or, or they got something going on. Like, what mistakes are, do you see people make when they first come in and record? And yeah. what's some what's some things that you have seen? Like, damn, they they still doing it. They still, you know saying, staying strong. Um, Some of the mistakes I see is they instantly come in and try to be like something that already exists. Mm-hmm. Y'all want to be like drink champs. Well, drink champs already, already exist. <laughs> yeah. I want to be the breakfast club. The breakfast club already exists. Mm -hmm. Um, What people don't realize is with podcasting specifically, they need you. 
They need you, your authentic self. Mm -hmm. The topics that people are talking about, everybody talking about this shit all week, mm -hmm. right? So it's not that like you about to give some. Like, what you about to say about Will and Jada that ain't been said before, mm -hmm. right. right? Like you're not about to get no earth breaking, ground shattering type shit, but. The people who tune in for you, they want to hear your for perspective sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. on it. And when you just regurgitate, what I hear want? niggas watch ESPN and go to work and then talk like basketball analysts. Like, <laughs> nigga, you got that shit from ESPN. Hell yeah. It's like, so when you watch the shit. shade room, you look at the comments and then you go on the pod and say the exact comments in the shade room. Mm -hmm. And that's not you. Mm -hmm. Like, so what me and Dame do is like, whatever the trending topic is, right? It could be Will and Jada. We'll talk about it because we have to, but we really want to have a conversation about infidelity. Yeah. Or we want to have a conversation exactly. about, I don't, like, because two years from now, who the fuck cares about, yeah, Will, what's Jada. a rapper that's probably not going to be around? Uh, <laughs> who going to care about Ice Spice four years from now yeah. when they find your episode, right? <laughs> I don't like that I just disrespected her. Yeah. Was, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not, I was trying to. But who is going to care? But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Or insert what 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 happens with random reality TV star four years from now? No mm -hmm. one's gonna know. Yeah, like, who the fuck is that? Because what with podcasting, this shit forever. Mm -hmm. If somebody said we share this shit up, when we share this stuff on our timeline, someone like, oh, I ain't never heard of Shia versus everybody. Let mm -hmm. me go check it out. And now I go back to three years and listen to all the episodes mm -hmm. because when somebody find a new podcast that they fucking with, yeah, they, go they back. get caught yeah. up. No, for sure. So when they getting caught up. If everything that you ever done is about what's trending that week, yeah, they gonna be here. I don't really care. Yep. You about... know what I think is a huge mistake that people make? Like a lot of niggas, y'all think y'all funny. Or y'all think y'all got good conversation. <laughs> and it just be because all y'all be drunk and yeah. high together. That's it. And like when you can't smoke in the studio or you don't have or you need to get drunk before you record. Like, nigga, you booked for two hours. You already an hour and a half in, and we ain't turned the mics on because y'all just yeah. y'all just getting drunk. That's the thing. You book for an hour. You 20 minutes in, and you still pouring liquor. Like, start talking, dog. Yeah. Or, <laughs> start or, talking. Or another one where I can tell niggas is, like, on some other shit. They come in, they immediately want to get on live, and they talk into their audience. Hey, hey, Cherise, it, no, where y'all at? I hate listening to a podcast show. You are engaged on the phone, talking to your live. Like, what the fuck? We don't know what the hell going on. Just t talk on the mic. Leave your phone you, alone. You see, you see a lot of that shit with these, with these chicks, and they be, you know, they be fine. They be Detroit popular, but, like, you get to talking to them, mm. and they be like, baby, is the lights on up there? Like, no. is anybody home? And they just be... I don't I don't want to diss nobody in particular, but we didn't have like a lot of pretty women come through yeah. and that just be it. Yeah. They be pretty mm -hmm. and they have a following because, you know, you got a fat ass and some big titties. But like that doesn't make you a I personality. Got a, I got an idea. Let's have a battle with the sexes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's a brand new idea. <laughs> but, you know, some people do it differently. But like when your whole your whole idea, uh, the first thing that I niggas took the email or call or text like, yo, can we smoke in there? I'm like, no, nah, our building don't. We can't smoke in the building. Mm -hmm. All right. Like my nigga, you, you potting for an hour. Mm -hmm. You can't go an hour without smoke. Yeah. Get high in the car. I don't, yeah, for sure. You know Come in, bitch, blow. Yeah. Or whatever. But like. You got to be yourself. Um, I personally, um, we don't have a guest-based podcast. Mm. We do guests, you know what I'm saying? But we don't have a guest-based podcast because depending on who you are, mm. you may not be able to get the guest. You've booked the you booked the pod, you booked the episode. You hear your guests don't show up, mm. and now you can't talk. Yeah, like oh, we're gonna have to reschedule. Mm -hmm. But you still owe me money. Well, I'll reschedule once for <laughs> yeah, you, but yeah. like somebody could have used this time slot. Mm -hmm. But like, if you don't got like, can you talk? Yeah, it's two of y'all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's Chop three of y'all. Can y'all not? But that's the thing. The mics tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? You can hide. You can hide behind your Instagram filters. You can, you know, hide behind them cute captions or them reels or whatever. You turn these motherfucking mics on. Either you know how to have a conversation, be engaging, or you don't. And a lot of niggas, you know, I've seen rappers, I've seen Detroit popular niggas come in there, and y'all really like socially awkward. Y'all don't oh my God. super <laughs> awkward. Oh my god. Y'all don't y'all don't know 
what to say or what to, if somebody not talking about clothes fashion or where y'all gonna be at yeah. y'all don't really know what to say or it's what all. to do man. and that hour get real uncomfortable you know we had we had a terrible episode and you probably wouldn't know it the way Jay edited it, but we had a terrible episode like, you know, a few Couple months, months back. Ago. Mm. And the nigga was like, like once we started getting into it, I was like, oh, this nigga don't, like he he lost. <laughs> he he he, he want to be here because he want to be here because mm. that's the thing I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But like when it got to like really talking to him and his team, like the nigga, one word, two word answers. <laughs> we asked him about the project. And he was like, I, I ain't got no I, money for that. I ain't I, got. I can't support it. Like it, it was, it was really painful. But it's and that, crazy. You, you, oh, I'm sorry, cut you off. My bad. Yo, go ahead. Go oh ahead. no, because you do got a lot of people that just want to come on your platform, but really ain't got. Don't know how to talk. Don't got shit to talk about. Never listen to it. Yeah, don't never listen to the podcast. They just want to be there because, like you said, it's the thing to do. They feel like that's the. You know, you're just supposed to do that. You're supposed to get on the platform and just be there. Yeah, and lot, don't have shit to say. A lot of people don't actually focus on the audio. Right, so podcasting is audio first. Mm-hmm. Right, what is morphed into is something different or whatnot. But like, for, I I end up purchasing new mics, mm-hmm. right? Because I had mics similar to this, um, and on these stands and shit. But like, it was so many people that are come in to do their podcast, <laughs> and they'll sit like this. And I would, you know, like, yeah, hey, just, you, yeah. just I'm like, I put like a little green dot here, like, hey, you just talking to that green dot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they just won't. Mm-hmm. I'm like, y'all got on headphones too, right? So you can, I get everybody headphones so you can hear yourself. You can hear when you talking on the microphone like this or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Hey, girl, hey. Yeah. <laughs> so I got the mic arms to like, since you're going to sit back, let me pull this back. Exactly. So you get, but like, you're not focused on the actual audio of it. And shout out to our podcast listeners because they work in the plant. They truck drivers. They listen in their car. They listen in their headphones at work. Cleaning they the house need, on Saturdays. They need the audio. The mm-hmm. video is cool. But like, if y'all are age, right? Mm-hmm. You 35, 40 or up. Fam, y'all not on YouTube. Mm-hmm. That's not the that's not the demographic that's on YouTube watching. Definitely not watching a two hour uh a two hour video. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um until you build that in and it's like it's different, but mm-hmm. like yeah, focus on that audio. Yeah. Like I get it. You want to put your video up there and everything like that. I got a love hate relationship with with the advertising and the in the social media posts and everything like that because I personally have never listened to a podcast because you posted a picture of your podcast mm-hmm. unless it's oh shit that's Fifty Cent in there with yeah. it. Let me <laughs> let me listen because he had yeah. Fifty Cent. Yeah. Other than that, I've never listened to a yeah. po- oh they got a picture. Mm-hmm. Let me no. go listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've never done that. Now, if it's a video clip and the in the conversation sound interesting, I'm like oh, I want to hear the rest of that conversation. Yeah. Now that's a thing. Mm. But like you posting a video of a pod just because you know you got to, mm. but that's not interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not listening to that shit. Yeah. And, nigg- and niggas should just like really find their voice and find you. You know, like you said, you got to be uniquely you. There's a reason that people gravitate to you. You don't have there's enough sauce out here where you don't have to be nobody else. Mm. And I think a lot of times people get on the socials and like Jay said, they see what work for other people. And I need to be that. No, your your brand is going to grow because people are listening to you and what you got to say and how you say it. And like everybody can't be Angela Yee Mm. and everybody can't be Charlemagne. Somebody got to be. You know, Tiffany from the West Side. Somebody mm-hmm. got to be, you know. Jay and Dan. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you just got to be uniquely yourself. Mm-hmm. And like I said, when I see people come in trying to be somebody else, you know, always on that live or like they can't be shit until they shit face drunk <laughs> and they an hour and a half and they, you know, booked a two hour session and they an hour in. Like, and you think this sound better than it do. Cause you're drunk. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, you you're gonna go back and like, oh hell no. Remember we had that we had this one girl that came in there and she had like a whole yes. setup, had a backdrop. Yes. Beautiful woman. Had a whole setup, had a backdrop, you know, how she wanted to do it. Booked a two hour session, nigga. They was legit there for like an hour before they did anything. We waiting on people to come. I like, think I'm that's, not how, about. that's not how the studio I session. Name, but I think you know you're about. That's not how the studio session work, baby, because you book from two to four. At four o'clock, 
I don't give a fuck who done been here. Like, I'm gone. It's we over. got another session at 4.30. Somebody like, you're paid, done with. Somebody paid their money to come up here and record their pod. So, it's not that I don't want you to run over. Mm-hmm. Somebody, if, if, if nobody's next and I don't got nothing to do, mm-hmm. I'm very generous with my time sometimes. Even more so than I should be. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, you know what? All right, I'll give you a couple more moments for, for the guests to arrive, whatever. Mm-hmm. But that's not... <coughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I, I think I know you're talking about. But yeah, a lot of people do... Look at other podcasts and be like, oh, I can do this shit. It's easy. Oh, I, I seen Nori and Gilly and all these motherfuckers talking and they just cracking jokes. I can do this too. But like you said, you get on a mic and you really ain't that funny for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? So now it's, it's awkward hey, listening to it. man, if you think it. you can do a book two hours a time and come do it. Yeah. Come do it. I'll that's press the, best, the button. That's hmm. the best. Like, so some people, I want to see the, the, the inter personal relationship between Jay and Dame. I want to mm-hmm. hear y'all converse with each other. Mm-hmm. Cuz I feel like it's me and my homies yeah. talking. You know? So uh, now how how did how did y'all grow the podcast, bro? Cuz like I know y'all y'all pre- a lot of people are preaching about audio and stuff like that, but what would y'all from, you know, saying just having it in front of your homeboys and homegirls like what did mm-hmm. y'all do to grow your audience for the podcast and have them go and listen to it on, you know, saying the audio version and come watch y'all on YouTube and stuff like that. It starts with your 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 own personal network right mm-hmm. so that's where it starts um uh, instagram is a little bit different hashtags used to be um like a thing um posting interesting content like me and me and dame did the first verses mm-hmm. andre 3000 verse ti it's still on youtube right now mm-hmm. um like because uh, he say andre 3000 top whatever whatever i'm like nigga ti rap better than andre mm-hmm. and like it can't it was a joke you know what i'm saying but like we put that shit on the internet. We did one guy to go between Big, Pac, Nas, and Jay. We mm-hmm. put that on Facebook. It got like a lot of attention and whatever. But like in real life, in my personal and professional opinion, um, the best place to grow and advertise your podcast is on other podcasts. Mm-hmm. Right? So having other podcasters on or going to other podcasters show is the best place because you have a, a very unique listener who is a podcast fan. Mm-hmm. They're very cerebral if they can listen to audio for an hour and a half and not have video, right? So the best place to... And once you get into podcasting, so you got a bunch of fans that love your pod, right? It's only dropping once a week. Yeah. What do I do for the rest yeah, the of day. my... Yeah, for sure. 40 hours and I'm going to yep. be at work. Let me find something else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So advertising on other podcasts and, and real and real, real life is just cater to your audience. I see so many people make the mistake of trying to garner new fans and like the people who listen to you now listen to you for a reason and you keep trying to do something different to pull other people and some of your core may leave because like, yo, that's not what we signed up for. Mm-hmm. We didn't sign up for, you know what I mean? Some of my motherfuckers tell me like, I don't, I don't, I don't like when y'all had guests. Mm-hmm. I just want to hear y'all talk. Y'all yeah. don't never have to have a guest. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, I look at it like campaigning. You know what I'm saying? We had to hit the pavement, get our faces out there. I sh- shake hands, kiss babies, like all of that shit. You know, the socials helped. You know, it started with our core with, with our core base, friends, family, people that fuck with us. But that's only going to get you so far. Mm-hmm. The socials help in putting our faces out there. And I know for me, I'm not afraid to hit the streets and go see niggas go talk to niggas if somebody invited somewhere fuck it i'm 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 gonna do everything within my power to show up there mm-hmm. i'm gonna work the room i'm gonna talk to people you know i'm a networking has been huge for me in order to get out there you know you we have different podcast like like this relationship you came on our show and now we on your platform mm-hmm. you know building those relationships and just being genuine people if i say i'm gonna do some shit i'm gonna do some shit if i tell a nigga i'm gonna be somewhere i'm gonna be there if i can't make it you're gonna get a call from me and we're gonna figure something else out For sure. but like i i get out there and i look at it like campaigning i'm not afraid to go Nowhere in the city, sit down on anybody platform, talk to them. If it's genuine, you ain't on no fuck shit. You know what I'm saying? And you want us to come out, you know, I don't care. I don't I don't look at niggas shit like I'm too big for this or this is too small for me. Like I'm humbled that you want me to come out and just talk. Mm-hmm. So if you invite me out somewhere, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna do my thing. We're gonna take pictures. We, I'm gonna promote it on our socials. Uh, hopefully you promote it on yours mm-hmm. and we're gonna keep building like that. But like, you know, I like the the organic type of grassroots shit. Like if you holler at me, 
fuck it. What what time? What, yeah. You know, where, when can we work it out? And let's let's just do sure. this shit. Like in real, like Freeway Rick. What was you doing on our show? Yeah, we didn't have the we didn't have a we didn't have the the giant following. That it wouldn't be had. like if we had him on present day. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. But he did it because the the off the strength of the twins. Mm-hmm. He like yo, he caught. What's so crazy? I'm watching, uh, Freeway on Vlad TV years ago, mm-hmm. and I was like, man, that'd be super dope with me and Dame and like find a way to to get in contact with him. Like, what kind of questions would I ask him? And because mm-hmm. it's an internal conflict with me. Like, y'all love all the shit you're doing, but like. You probably single handedly the reason that we are in the position yeah. that we in right now. Yeah. And then that later that week, um, I think SJ hit me up was like, "Yo, y'all want to have freeway on?" Yeah. Like for like, real. Fuck? <laughs> I'm like, I literally just said it in my brain. Yeah. And like two or three days later, you call me like, "Oh hell yeah. yeah!" When I see this, when I think of like the people that's been through them doors, you know, I don't never like to name drop, but like we didn't have freeway Rick, we didn't had. Uh, the twins had Jay Prince, mm-hmm. Ty Mopkins, TK Kirkland, you know, all the type of, I mean, Shot. street, yeah, Shot. <laughs> we did, street we didn't have Chet Piss- boys been in there, BMF, fucking, yeah, that's low, yeah. uh, yo, uh, he went to prison again. Yeah. J-Bo. He, J-Bo was in there yeah. in this, in the, so you, in the studio, same studio you was in, mm-hmm. he brought 50 people with him. Duh. <laughs> and I don't know why I didn't realize that it was going to be 50 people. Cause we are talking about BMF, yeah. but like, you know, it's not, it's not the biggest space. Yeah, it's not at all. Yeah. Yeah. But like 50, 50 people. people and he was like, yo, can we smoke in here? I like y'all. Y'all can't really smoke in here, but like, <laughs> what I'm gonna do? <laughs> it's late at night. They get the security in here. So yeah. Y'all do what the fuck y'all want. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> it's like, fuck it. But what I'm gonna do about it? Uh, so it's been a. It, it, but all, but all that's come from organic shit. Just networking, getting, networking, the talking yeah. to people, no, campaigning, sure. getting to know people. Like the the twins legit just reached out to Jay Prince and maneuvered that whole thing. He happened to be in Detroit a specific weekend. Like literally, we saw him three times in the same weekend and shit. Mm-hmm. And you know, just building those. Well, who did, didn't he bring Deion Sanders' ex-wife with him? Yeah, and she was there. Julia Beverly. It was just a lot yeah. of. Then just, Ice Cube was in town. Ice Cube pulled up because uh, the big three was in town, so it was end up being Jay Prince, Ice Cube, and Trick Trick. Yeah. Um, because yeah. we went over to the to the listening session over at, at the at the time collector studios mm. and like i remember i had to go to work that night i was working midnights and like i just i called off because i'm like it don't feel right for me mm. being with julia beverly uh jay prince and doing all this other stuff and we are networking doing our thing and like yo, i'm about to leave early so i can go to work <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> you know what i'm saying i gotta go y'all i'm like no nah, i can't and that's the first time i called off because yeah. i don't i don't call off mm-hmm. you feel me but it's so weird, but like it's the networking, right? Because all those different podcasts coming here, I'm usually for the most part, I'd be in there setting everything up and getting to talk to them before and after, and they'd be like, "You want to be on the one up hot?" Mm-hmm. I'd be like, "Sure, I sit yeah, in." For sure. And then I get to promote yeah. shop talk. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we'll get some listeners from here, get some listeners there, and like, yo, and then like, well, shit, you know, you and Dave want to jump on? I'm yeah. Like, yeah. We we for sure yeah. in real life it's it's real it's real life networking being personable, mm. you know. What, what's the one thing? Last question about the podcast. What's the one thing you want people to take away from your from your show? Uh, you might get some knowledge. You might get some laughs. But either way, you will be entertained. Mm-hmm. It's authentic. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna get. Uh, we're not gonna do what's just popular. We're not gonna do what's, you know, what's just trendy. Whatever you get from me and Jay is gonna be authentic, and we stand behind them words. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't we don't edit the podcast, and we don't shy away from shit. I talk crazy all the time, but I stand on that shit, and we stand on like our brand. You know, when you see the blue and the black, you know where the fuck you at. When you hear me and Jay, you understand what that brand comes along with, and that's what's carried us and will continue to carry us. We're gonna be authentic and be authentically ourselves. Until we not doing this shit no more. And that's that's what's carried Shop Talk Podcast. We ain't never tried to be nobody else. We ain't never tried to mimic nobody else. We don't shit on nobody else. But we us. Mm-hmm. We do what we do. 
and you know it's enough lanes out there for you to do what you do and for us to never crash yeah, for it's sure. enough sauce out there for you Man. to uh, steal our recipe and make it your own mm -hmm. so I mean there, there's no hate we don't do no gatekeeping we don't do no whole shit if Man. you want the information all you gotta do is come holler at us book a session Man, I didn't, you know what I'm saying talk to us I didn't gave information to any and everybody I didn't literally help people set their own studios up this is what you need to buy. I didn't physically went and physically help somebody set their studio up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, let me, I'm holding shit on the wall yeah, for you. You know what I'm sure. saying? Because one, I fuck with you mm -hmm. and I don't, I'm not, I'm not a gatekeeper. Yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. And then one of the homies, like, he booked some time. He was like, I'm not potting today, but I do want to ask you the question. I want that at the very least. I want to pay you for your time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Thank you. Yeah, for sure. And um, and I respect that. Mm -hmm. And um, whatever you need, like yeah, you know, that's dope. yeah, we not hoard no information, and we not on no whole shit. So I mean, we, to me, I always look back. I always look at like somebody, maybe not in podcasting per se, but just through life, niggas always gave me a hand up, and it ain't never hurt them. You know, my light not going to dim just because I help you with something mm -hmm. or because I put you on the game or because you on our platform is not going to make me look worse or, or anything of that nature. So, I mean, if we if we can find a way to work together and it's mutually beneficial, then let's get the work done. For sure. One candle. My, to your point, a light does not dim. I, one candle can light a thousand candles mm -hmm. and they all burn at the same intensity. So, yeah, yeah. Now, this is the first time I... I, I usually do like little funny little segments and I try to do something to end the show off, whatever. It's my first time trying this with, you know, saying with you guys. All right. Too early, too late, or right on time. I give you something, you tell me if you, if it was too early, too late, or right on time. First, sex. Was sex t for you too early, too late, or right on time? Way too early. Right Way on time. Way too early. Right on time. I taste my. I got my first piece of pussy at fourteen, oh, yeah. and that shit turned me out yeah. way too early. It was early, that way was too early. early. All right, what was say? So I was doing some wild shit yeah. prior to me actually having sex. That was way too early, yeah. but it wasn't actual penetration. Right? Okay, yeah. but like it was that and that. Like nigga, you like eight? <laughs> what is you doing? Like, but that was. But like, I, I think I was like, uh, I like seventeen or some shit. Okay. Um, it ended up being right on time. Yeah. I got her pregnant straight out. First Damn. drop. Damn. First drop. 14 <laughs> years of semen led all into this young girl. <laughs> no rubber. 14. First time was raw. No rubber. 14 years worth of nut into another 14, 15 year old body. <laughs> Summer. <laughs> yeah, that was too early. Cause. <laughs> Way too early. <laughs> all right. Too early. Too late. All right on time. Figuring out life. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm uh, I'm 42 and still figuring that shit out. And I feel like I feel like you know, when you look at other people and what they got going on that that I I can't think of the phrase as the thief of joy or whatever. Mm, comparison is the thief of joy. <laughs> when you look at uh, yeah, when you look at other niggas, sometimes I look at like some of my homies mm. that I feel like are doing just like good. They got big houses, big cars, making a bunch of money and I'm like nigga I'm still off PA yeah. and I think like man maybe I figured this shit out too late but then I look at other aspects of my life like you know maybe I don't have a big ass house and a new ass car but I got the love of my children around me mm -hmm. you know what I man I almost died a few years ago I still got my health mm -hmm. I still got you know a decent job and like nigga it ain't it, maybe it ain't the best roof maybe I need a new roof <laughs> but I still got, got one roof over, yeah, I still yeah. got one over my head and nigga I own my house I don't pay no mortgage I ain't mm -hmm. you know it's it's mine free and clear and I'm like and I'm thankful for that but I'm like this life shit man at 42 I'm still figuring that shit the fuck out and I feel sometimes it's too late, but, yeah. you know, God keep giving you chances to wake up, so, I mean... You know. In real life, it's probably right on time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All the shit that I wanted younger in life, I'm glad I didn't get, because I would not have known what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And um, I look at, like, recently, I've been looking at, like, um, looking at the podcast and the podcast studio, how long we've been doing it, and I, I asked myself specifically with time and having the studio open, because the studio wasn't even, was never meant to be open to the public mm -hmm. it was really just a spot a small spot for me and him to record so we don't have to to wait 
to get an audio back and was paying only a white can, man and mm. only can record in this particular it was literally that and it turned into something else because we was helping people out mm. and i was like well man if i only had to record the pod an hour a week like how much free time would i got back during that free time what i've invested in, in different relationships and things of that nature mm. and you go through that process but it's like okay what if you married with a child are you fulfilled with that? Mm -hmm. What if you live in that particular life, but you feel like, and that person that you look at, like, he got everything. He got the wife, he got yeah. the kids, he got the job. What if that person walks around unfulfilled and stifled, like they got something on their chest that they can't say? And and I don't have that. Mm -hmm. I don't have, I don't feel like there's something on my chest that I can't say. I don't feel unfulfilled creativity-wise or whatnot. So it's probably right on time, For sure. to be perfectly honest. For sure. All right, too early, too late, right on time. Moving out your parents' house. Right on time. Too early. Too early? Yeah. Too early. I know for me, <laughs> so I've always been a wild nigga. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's been me. You know, I knew 13, 14, like, I can't deal with this shit. <laughs> I can't deal with mama rules and, you know, all of that shit. And I left home at 19, and it wasn't really like... I had to leave situation. I just got like my first real job. Mm -hmm. We was working at Comcast. Like I was starting to make like real money. And I remember me and my mama had an argument and I was like, I can't take this shit no more. Yeah. And I found me an apartment two weeks later. I was, yeah, I was sure. gone. And when I looking back on it, like nigga, me and Jay, we was working in sales at Comcast. Like, nigga, I was legit bringing home like four, five grand a month mm. at 19. I should have stayed home, yeah, saved yeah, up yeah, like yeah. 10, 15 racks yeah. and bought a motherfucking house. But I felt like I was a man. Mm. Couldn't nobody tell me shit. You know, I I remember I found like one of my dad pay stubs looking through some mail. And I was like, shit, he making it off of this. I make this much. Yeah. Like, nigga, I ain't got to deal with this shit. And mm. I left. And I felt like... You know, I left because I was stubborn, mm -hmm. because I thought I was a man. And I never forget, like, my mama had left me, like, a letter in my Bible that mm -hmm. I had. Like, if the world get too cold, you can come back home. Like, nigga, the world cold than a motherfucker. <laughs> and I should have stayed home <laughs> at least a year. Because, yeah. nigga, I moved out the crib with $500 to my name. Mm -hmm. That wasn't enough to even, like, cover rent. Yeah. Had I got, I hadn't been on, first of all, I hadn't been on a job 90 days. <laughs> so, like, I ain't got no benefits. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I got fit. I had fifteen hundred dollars. I put down first last month, and I was like, "Fuck it, we out." Man. And I didn't know if I could maintain. Like at nineteen, I had never paid no other. Like the first thing I had was a cell phone bill. Man. Like nigga, I haven't even paid this cell phone <laughs> bill for a year. Like I didn't know if I could pay. I didn't have a checking account. I was. I remember busting my checks open, like four thousand dollar checks at the liquor store, <laughs> and I remember like the lady from the bank knew like my girlfriend had a had a like checking account and the lady from the bank saw me at the liquor store and she just stopped me she was like baby you doing this yeah. you doing this all wrong she was like with fifty dollars you can I'm like fifty 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 fucking dollars <laughs> she you probably give them niggas sixty bucks every check just yeah, to, man. just the percentages sure. off the check. Hell yeah. So I mean like moving out was too I tell a young nigga in a minute, look, I we used to clown my homie uh, guy Dia. Mm -hmm. my homeboy guy Dia, we used to clown him because he lived in his grandma basement mm -hmm. and but grandma basement was cool she wouldn't like she let us smoke we do beats rap yeah. and we didn't understand it we just thought this nigga was living in the basement now granny said you can't leave till you save up forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars she's still cooking three meals a day mm -hmm. granny washing clothes the house she not making this nigga pay no bills <laughs> so like he saved up 30, 40 grand and bought a house. And like, I wish I, like I tell a young nigga in a minute, humble yourself, For sure. humble yourself. Home is safe. my <laughs> nigga. Home is safe. It's warm. Even if your mama getting on your nerves, nigga, she going to leave you a plate in the exactly. microwave. Hell yeah. For you sure. know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know, you don't know what it's like to open up your, like, if you a young nigga and you ain't never lived on your own, you don't know what it's like to open up your refrigerator and all you got in there is sour cream and Kool-Aid. Yeah, nigga. That's it. Like, stay home. Yeah. And I moved out way too early and i tell i tell my kids all the time now like nigga my oldest 20 he got another year of college left look bro when you get done with school i know this ain't the lap of luxury but like you ain't gotta leave yeah. you know what i'm saying now nah it's it's some rule it's gonna be some rules here mm. but like nigga save up some money don't don't go out and get 
a eighteen hundred dollar a month apartment, you're making thirty two thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Like save up some money, get it right, and when you're ready to leave, yeah, yeah. then go out, then go out here. And I mean, times was a lot different. Like we was talking, my first apartment was five fifteen a month, mm-hmm. and I remember thinking like, I don't know if I'm be able to do this <laughs> shit. But like you gotta nigga stay home, stay home, save yeah. up your money. Save up your resources, get your credit straight, find you a woman that you can lock in with. Mm. Not just some bitch to fuck. Like, yeah. find you somebody to lock in with, and when you really ready, mm. get out here. Yeah, now get out. What about you, Jay? Too early, too? Uh, um, it ended up being right on time. Mm. Um, in the grand scheme of things, oh, this is what I was just looking for. Uh, look how much, in, this was in 93. Apartment versus what it is now. Average of rent was four hundred forty-seven dollars. Right now, it's two thousand dollars. Gas, uh, gas, uh, gas dollar price 11. was a dollar eleven. Now it's three eighty-six. Salary in ninety-three, average thirty-one thousand. Twenty twenty-three, fifty-six thousand. Yeah, man. Like it's, it's hard. That rent, you know crazy. what I'm saying? It, yeah. It's hard. Yeah. It's rent is expensive as shit. Yeah. Um, it was um, it was probably right on time actually. Uh, I think I left for about. 22 or 22 i think i'm like 22 mm. um it was a misunderstanding between me and my parents you know what i'm saying i didn't like how they handled a particular situation as an as an adult i was probably wrong yeah. or i probably i was just uninformed or whatever so we had stopped speaking inside of the home and then me and my i moved out with my brother uh, and we got to, we we rented a crib on uh, on um, Linwood and shit. Mm. Um, and then I got my first apartment. But like in real life, it was probably right on time because it was it was it was time for me yeah. uh, to leave. But like in retrospect, I was making a lot of money living at home, not paying any rent, not paying any real bills. Um, had I had if I could do it over. Um, I would have just wasted so much fucking money. <laughs> I was going to the bar. I was a club in every <laughs> like crazy. Guy, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We was out. Oh yeah, for you know sure. what I'm saying. Like for I had sure. a I had a budget two hundred dollars a night for yeah. like, like it was. God, I was tripping. I was Mr. A kid. Allen's and Foot Locker were seeing so much money <laughs> I had from ninety nigga. pair of jeans, nigga. <laughs> ninety. Just like good. it was it's retarded, nigga. Uh, my father still wears my clothes <laughs> like from twenty five years ago. Like Man. when I seen him on day before Thanksgiving and shit, like he had one of my shirts on <laughs> from, like high school and shit. Like I had way too much shit. But it was right on time. It was I needed that little adjustment. I needed to yeah. to to and because I moved in with my brother, uh he worked midnight shift, I worked more, so we really weren't never there yeah, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But there was a I guess there was a bit of a safety net there, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like Yo, them house bills wasn't no joke, nigga. Yeah. We got a crib, nigga. That heat bill. <laughs> I was like, he was like, man, the uh, the the consumers of DT was like, it's like five fifty. And I was like, how many months is that? He was like, nigga, that's this month. <laughs> 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 Oh Duh, shit! This whole yeah, place yeah. need new windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. turn this motherfucker heat down. <laughs> well, that nigga was working for Crosser. He had to go to uh, they transferred him to like Belvedere, Illinois, and shit. So when he left, um, I can either just pay everything at the crib i'm like nah i'm gonna go get me an apartment because uh, yeah. there's yeah. no way i'm 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 dropping 500 dollars <laughs> on fucking on a heat bill all right know? man now this is the last one before we get up out of here yeah it's been our longest interview we, we, see, you know what I'm saying? it went that quick it went quick but uh you found out too early too late around time that santa claus wasn't real it's almost christmas guys it's only right we ended like that i found out too late I remember <laughs> I remember the Christmas I found out like yesterday. <laughs> I remember asking my mother for a basketball jersey and we had like a guest bedroom in the house and she used to keep like knickknacks, paper, shit in there and I remember going in there and seeing the jersey, yeah. touching it. I put it on. Yeah. I walked that shit downstairs and I said, this is the jersey I asked for. <laughs> my mother stood there and acted like I wasn't holding <laughs> shit in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I wrote this down for Santa Claus and she and she like legit looked at me nigga I went back upstairs cause I asked cause I also asked this was the year I remember Street Fighter 2 had come out on Super Nintendo Street Fighter 2 was also in the closet I came back downstairs with the jersey and Street Fighter 2 and she was like you shouldn't be snooping through things that ain't yours yeah. and I was like alright 
All right, that's how we gonna play this. That's that's how we gonna play this. Like you gonna you gonna act like I don't have both these items in my hand, and then on Christmas Day I open up both them shits, and I I, I, I took rem- the bitches back. I remember just making eye contact with her after I opened them up. <laughs> so 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 Santa Santa had these sitting in the closet. What if you wouldn't? What if they wouldn't have been there when you opened your gifts? Then I don't know. Yeah, Cause but that'd I, have been an interesting Rico. Yeah, like, and but, then she wouldn't have got it later and shit. But I remember when you're talking about too early, too late. I told my oldest son, I, me and my ex wife had this thing like, look, we not going to tell him that Santa Claus is real, but whenever he asks for the truth, mm-hmm. we're going to give it to him. Yeah. My oldest asks for the truth like real young, mm-hmm. like pre K, mm-hmm. like he five. Yeah. And we told him, like, no, there's no Santa Claus. Mommy and daddy buy your gifts. That nigga went to school and told told all the kids. Nigga, when I went to pick him up that evening, like, it was kids crying. Like, (laughs) legit. Like, he told the whole class, like, no, your mommy and daddy buy them gifts. Santa Claus ain't real. fucked up. With the advent of the internet and cell phones, is it a secret still? Well, my, my son still believes in Santa Claus. He's seven. He don't got the internet? Yeah, he do. He just, he just ain't <laughs> like ran, he don't watch TV. He just ain't ran across it yet, man. Like it be like TV shows with like he getting fake clo- but he getting you. close to that age. Yeah, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna he getting close. I think I'm gonna tell him next year, man. But it, it kind of hurts. It's like take the innocence away, man. Like damn, like you. So look, this is this I heard this a long time ago on the podcast, right? And it was a, a white family, a mother and her son, and she said their relationship was fractured over some Santa Claus shit. Mm-hmm. So he was like past the age where he should know that Santa Claus is not real. Yeah. And they was making fun of him at school. Mm-hmm. He went home, asked his mom, like, just just be straight with me. Mm-hmm. Is Santa Claus real? Yeah. Now, the husband, him and his family, they go all out for Christmas. Mm-hmm. They put hoof prints in the snow. Mm-hmm. And he was like, tell him it's, it's real. Mm-hmm. But he knew his mom was lying because mm-hmm. he's seen it in her face. So, like, I'm getting ridiculed at school. I come to ask you for mm-hmm. support. And you look me in my and eye more. and you lied to yeah. me. And she was like, our relationship was never the same after that. Because you the protector mm-hmm. and you you sat there in my face and lied to me. Listen, nigga, let that shit personal- go. Let yeah. that shit go. <laughs> I mean, do your mom lie to your face? Has she lied to my face? Like, like not, not because on some mom shit, right? But like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm getting ridiculed. I'm just, I just need you to help me out, dog. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Y'all keep telling me this and that, and then so like, which one is it? And look, man, I love my mama to death, but I remember the last time she like lied to my face, like nigga, I looked at her like the enemy. <laughs> like, no, but I was grown. Like, <laughs> I'm so, just saying. So my ex-wife was, you know how when you move from like apartment to apartment, it be that wait time. Sometimes it's ready, sometimes it's not. She was moving from this apartment to this condo. And something got fucked up and they needed like another three weeks with the condo. So she was living with my mother. She was living with her mama. Mm. You know, my kids up over there. But my mom was always like real involved. She going to go get her grandbabies. And I remember coming like Sunday would be the day we would exchange the kids. Crystal, my ex-wife, would always drop them off to my parents' house. Sometimes there'd be some food there. So, you know, we going to kick it, watch the game. And I remember coming to the house and I remember seeing some like, going in the basement and seeing her clothes hanging up like she was washing them there so i remember going upstairs i'm like this bitch living here like ma you letting her live here till her apartment ready and she looked at my face she was like ah they not living here i was like all right <laughs> all right but i knew she was lying to me so what i did this is so fucked up i took some of her clothes because like if you're not living here you know, I spent the night though, my nigga. Leave my clothes alone. No, nah, it was way too many. Like nigga, it. She was washing loads. Yeah, you I know? need a washing machine. Nigga, she was living there. She was living. What there. if she really wasn't though? And yo, you just called your mom a liar, and she's not lying. She just let her come wash I, her clothes I, and stay for two days. I knew how my dad was. So for like, my parents had the type of relationship where if he, if one of them say something, you don't question the other one. Mm-hmm. And I knew how my dad was not saying nothing. <laughs> I said something ain't something's a ride. Like she she really living here. Like he wasn't saying like wasn't refuting it, wasn't like let it go. I he was like co signing it quiet. And like that's between you and your mama. I'm yeah, like, yeah, and, I and, that's, it. and like when I found out, I was like so like I confronted like so she living here. Like I put what I did, like, later in the week, I just popped up because I always had a key. Yeah. So I'm just walking in, and, like, she got on comfortable clothes. She got on <laughs> pajamas and a rose. I'm like, oh, 
So you is living here. <laughs> like, I confronted everybody. And she was like, well, you got my clothes. I'm like, you can have them back. But, like, all, all y'all lying to me. <laughs> y'all supposed to be on my side of the divorce. No, God, and, and that was my thinking. Like, And she was like, they're my grandbabies, and I'm always going to look out for them. And my dad told me straight up, like, that's my wife. And you don't question me about my wife. Yeah, and that was yeah. the end of it. That's it. But she that's was it. lying to my face. My mama was lying to my face. I think it was too late. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I always been like the conspiracy nigga, like something ain't right here, right? <laughs> and, Handwriting. Um, and my father, we never had company over. Like you couldn't. Family can spend the night. Yeah, but friends. Yeah, that's just not a thing. Mm-hmm. Nobody got a key. He ain't give us a key at the time. Mm-hmm. We was like, well, how's Santa Claus getting here? Because we know you ain't. We ain't got no chimney. Mm-hmm. Like, well, he got a key that fits everybody. <laughs> like, you don't you don't give people keys to this yeah. house. You know what I'm saying? So, we was like. Um, this kind of looked like your handwriting mm-hmm. on on the on the damn on, on the, the name. Gifts, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the next shit it was written in block letters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then like we had stayed up and hid underneath the table because like we about to catch this nigga. Because like, I know I know something ain't right. And then like he he can't we fuck around and fell asleep underneath the table though. <laughs> but we heard him downstairs like putting batteries in the, uh we heard a remote control car so yeah. he's probably downstairs yeah, put putting batteries shit, yeah. in the remote control car That's but like we was it. like we gotta catch this nigga like, man this, like this not true we know that <laughs> but you don't know right exactly. and like it, there ain't no internet at the time you just got school like you don't know but it's like man. come on man so man. we kind of figured it out first yeah you know man what I'm saying? but you're right it's just that innocence of him once kid so like my oldest he been new but he never like broke that shit to like his younger siblings Mm -hmm. like my my kids my younger kids now still like believe and he don't you know Santa Claus coming for Christmas it helps the kid imagination niggas got PS5s they got (laughs) giant imaginations we don't need Santa Claus for imagination but Christmas it's American tradition now like nigga Christmas trees and lights and presents and gifts speaking of I gotta go get some lights when I leave this motherfucker you know what I'm saying (laughs) the lights went out I want y'all put the lights on that shit wasn't working like damn you and you the man of the house and everybody looking at you <laughs> to make the, li- make the lights come on. Hell yeah, so I'm like, up. Oh, gotta get some lights tomorrow, duh. But man, I appreciate y'all coming on, man. Man, I appreciate, appreciate you, man. I appreciate, appreciate the invite. Like I said, man. I, I'm still, you know what I'm saying, appreciate for y'all having me on y'all platform and shit like that, man. So I already know this is a connection that we gonna, you know what I'm saying, keep on building and stuff for like sure. that. For sure. And uh, shit, give people where they can find y'all on socials and stuff. Um, Jay Johnson 313 on everything that matters. Um, follow Shop Talk Podcast on um, Instagram, Shop Talk Podcast Studio on Instagram. Shit, just go to Shop Talk Podcast Studio.com and book some time. Uh, it's Dame 3 underscores 313 on Instagram and TikTok. I just got back on Twitter. It's Wild Dame 313 on Twitter. Uh, and I tell niggas, at me, talk to me, I talk back. When you're talking to me on the socials, you're talking to me. And if mm. you want to connect with me, that's the best place to find me if you don't know me. Or you can find me at your local five below. <laughs> 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 but no, man, you already know, man. Episode 180, Shop Talk Podcast, Jay Johnson. Damn going wild and shit, man. You already know what it is, man. Salute. Peace. Hey, Peace. ain't no competition for this. I don't see it, man. Peace out.